Cooley. We got three lovely ladies on a panel today. Uh, let's get into the show. Cue me when I join. Mm-hmm. All right. So we got another episode today. Uh, three lovely ladies on a podcast. We talking dating and relationships like usual. And uh, hey, for all the supporters, if you're watching right now on Facebook, you already know what to do. Go over to YouTube and uh, click the like notification and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also on YouTube, if you're watching right now, click that like notification let's get this video in the algorithm uh actually i'm always having audio issues so let me know if the audio is good put a one in the chat if the audio is crispy put a two in the chat if it's not let's see what the chat's saying actually let me go on here we got ones Oh, we got ones. We good. All right. So let's have the ladies introduce themselves, uh, starting with you. Name, age, and where you from? Me? Yeah, you. Name, age, and where I'm from? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was about to, <laughs> had to make sure. Uh, my name is Hennessy. I'm from New York, and I'm 26. Okay, Hennessy, uh, from New York. You 26? Yes. You look fairly young. I look... <laughs> I That's get a, that a lot. Yeah. It's we good checked jeans, the ID good before jeans. you. I had my, my, you, I, my bodyguard I, check you your ID. They it. already checked it. They told me you was good. <laughs> you got it. And uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, right now, I'm just bartending. You bartending right now? Okay. That's what's up. And uh, you said you're from New York. Where do you live? Uh, right now, where I live or where did I live when I was in New York? No, where do you live now? You in the AP, you local, right? In the yeah. Valley? Okay. I'm in Allentown, or, um, the south side. Okay, where are you right in Allentown and relationship status? I'm single, newly single, newly single. Yeah, okay, okay. And E, just remember to, yeah, back and forth with me. Um, newly single. So, wait, when did the relationship end? Um, I want to say like two weeks ago. Oh, you, uh, oh, you fresh out, you the, know, out the. She got the box with it. She's single. She like, yeah, I'm coming on a podcast to talk my stuff. I don't even like that. It's just, it's not you like know, that. it's okay. just new. It's just, you know. All right, fair. It is what it is. Fair enough. Fair enough. It's not like that. Um, <laughs> and I'm oh, say okay. So you said you bartend and you're newly single. Moving right along. Name, age, and where you from? I'm Victoria. I'm 31, and I'm from. Well, I live in Pottstown. Pottstown. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Do you live in Pottstown? Mm-hmm. I thought you lived out here. No. Dang, you all be in Pottstown? What? I know. All right. Cool. <laughs> and uh, 31 years old, what do you do for a living? Um, The surgical implants. So for like your spine, the spinal implants. That's what you did before when you was on the podcast? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, still well, doing the same thing. Still doing the same thing. Relationship status. Still single. <laughs> still single. <laughs> Not still. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. And uh, let's go with, let's add another question on here. Well, I'll do that at the end, actually. Let's go with yourself. Name, age, and where are you from? My name is Trish. I am 50 years old, and I'm from Easton. Trish, 50 years old. You're from Easton. And what do you do for a living? I'm a nurse. I, I'm a nurse practitioner, um, and I am an injector. Nurse practitioner and an injector. Mm-hmm. Um, like, uh Filler and fillers Botox. and Botox yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. Nice, Trish. And um, relationship status. I'm single. Single. Yeah. Okay. How? And you was single before, right? Yeah. Then I when was. you came, what you was? So you still single? I'm just not. I'm, <laughs> I'm not. I don't know. Just, just you chilling right now. I'm chilling because I'm just. I don't know. I'm just. I don't know. Not ready. Yet. You didn't find him yet. No, he's still out there. Still out there. Okay. Oh, well, you fifty, Trish. You know we gotta, we gotta find them. Yeah, I gotta find them now. No, it's kind of busy. I mean, I've been all I've 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 traveled so many places this year though. Yeah. And if I was dating someone, I wouldn't be able to focus on my business. I'm putting my business together. So like basically, 
it takes a lot of energy and a lot of effort. And then at the end of the day, it's like go home or sleep or go out and find that something mm -hmm. special. And, and Trish, do you have kids? I have a son. Okay, Trish, you do. And who, anyone else has kids on the panel? No. No kids. Okay. 31, how you dodged <laughs> many bullets? <laughs> um, I wouldn't say it's that. I just, I, I have like, uh, like an issue. Oh, okay. Yeah. Your personal thing going yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, all right. So, hey, chat, everybody on YouTube right now, hey, y'all got any super chats? Y'all want to ask these three lovely ladies any questions? Um, send in anything. You know, anything you send in, we'll read. Uh, if you have a super chat, you could, you know, make a comment to me or the ladies. I'll read that. Um, or if you have a question, I'll read your question. But you got to send in a super chat. A super chat is... You can send in a dollar, two dollars, however much money you like, but that's the only way I'm going to read your question. If not, we stick into the usual questions on the panel, just dating and relationship type stuff. And I don't even know what we're talking about today. It's really random today. Um, but other than that, uh, let's get into, let's start with Trish. Fun fact about yourself. Something fun <laughs> that you want people to know. 50 years on the planet. <laughs> oh, Some fun facts about me for 50 years on the planet. I know it's weird. I can't even believe I've been on the planet for 50 years. Yeah. Um, I can't think of any fun facts that are really that fun. Um, I don't know. Like, I mean, a said? talent maybe. Oh yeah. I mean, I I kind of I'm into photog artistic photography. That is a lot of fun. Okay, you're into artistic photography yeah explain explain okay so just like artistic like doing photographs that are artistic in nature like like with flowers or like with some kind of art like displaying like an art more and so. okay so you're just taking pictures of flowers and stuff yeah oh, okay cool so that's what you're into well I guess when you're 50 years old, you know, you got to <laughs> find the small things to find some interest in. I'm just joking with you, Trish. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm sure when I'm 50, who knows? I'm going to be like playing Connect Four by myself. Beat you again. Beat you again. No, no one. No, you won. But it's just me. It's a little weird, but we'll write along. Fun fact about yourself, Vicky. Um, I actually like to write songs and I can rap a little bit. Oh, uh, spit a bar. bar. Spit bar. <laughs> All right. So one that I can remember off the top of my head, because I'm not a freestyle rapper. Like I have to write. Okay. And, so, uh, and I'm sorry. Let me get a quick rules of the podcast. Ladies, uh, one mic at a time. I still didn't get the audio um, issue fixed when basically when I'm when whoever's speaking at the same time, it cancels the audio and no one could hear anything. So um, just one mic at a time. But I'm um, also, spit your bar. Okay. It was, you know, remember the... Um, you, need a, you want me to... Not you remember the Yo Gotti challenge? The dollar for dollar? I don't remember. But go ahead, spit it anyway. Let me hear it. All right. Hold well, on, I'm nervous. <laughs> you good. We got how many people? We got 200 people watching right now. You all right. All right, let me get it. Because <laughs> I still have it written down on my phone. <laughs> I wish I could rap. That's lit. People like don't even notice, like don't even be knowing that about if me you because. You need to read it from the phone. You could go ahead and read it from the phone. It's cool. That's what I'm doing. That's what I said. Okay. I, I feel, find I feel it. like when people are freestyle, like it's just like that talent is so unique. I think I can hold on. I think I can just remember it. All right, hold on. <laughs> I'm so nervous. Um, I said. Remember them days we all had to struggle. We had to hustle straight from the muscle, straight out the mud. The streets get dirty. One in the head, the clip holding 30. If you want beef, then we can get sturdy. Ready for war? I don't ever worry. Saying it's in toes, I'm always on go. Any bitch get it, you know how it goes. Y'all bitches playing y'all foot on a show. I don't got time to play game with these hoes. My time is money, you already know. My wrist is icy like playing in the snow. I rap for fun, don't take it all literal. I ain't a joke, though shit can get critical. I'm not your average, I never been regular. Eyes on the money, I'm hungry, a predator. Listen. Dollar for dollar, shout out for shout out, but we know you bitches ain't bout it. I've been an outsider, don't fit in the circle. That lame shit, I ain't around it. You bitches is trash, living your life off another dude cash like you got it. Y'all bitches is broke, y'all hoes is a joke. That's why I just sit back and laugh. Oh. That was it. Okay. 
Okay. All right. DeMarco. My my heart is like pumping. You, like, oh my gosh. <laughs> you didn't even look at your phone, did you? No. Yeah, that was off the tizzy. That was off the top. Yeah. Okay. But Not I like writing more like, like love, uh, love stuff. <laughs> chat, if you think it was fire, put a one in the chat. If you think it was trash, put it to in the chat. Let's have the, <laughs> let's have the chat rate your bars. A one in the chat if you think it's fire. A two in the chat if you think she need to retire. Well, I never started, so it was cool. <laughs> no, fair enough. Thank you for having the courage to spit oh, your bar. Ones. Oh, all right. <laughs> My delivery is like, eh, but... Nah, all good. You got some ones in here. Okay, oh, I'm I'm seeing some ones. Yeah, seeing a lot of yeah, ones. Yeah, some ones is coming in. We got oh, maybe thanks, one, two. <laughs> you got you like know? three haters. Yeah, you got a, you got a couple haters. We gonna have some haters. It's okay. I understand. <laughs> okay, so that's a fun fact about yourself. You like to rap. And moving right along to Hennessy, fun fact about yourself. Um, A fun fact? I don't know if it's fun. Um... You can draw. Yeah, I'm an artist. I, I, well, I have, I'm multi talented, so I feel like that's a fun fact about me. I can do yeah. a lot of different things. So, like, uh, <laughs> um, I can sculpt like clay. I can mold like a shape of a heart, like the actual human heart. Um, I can paint, draw. I can sing. I do photography. Wait, time out. I'm not singing. <laughs> time out. Time out. Time out. Yes, but please. Um, uh, also, chat, we got my man Ease in the back. He's producing. So if you hear another man's voice, it, it's Ease right now. <laughs> it's not they, probably feel like, where they feel like, where is this other man's man? voice? <laughs> yeah, it's my man Ease in the back. He's on a switchboard today. Um, but Hennessy, you yes, sing. I do. This is a podcast. It ha gets millions of views on other social media platforms. Who knows? You could be seen by an R or someone like that. She just spit a bar. You know, you sure you don't want to give it a shot? Embarrassingly, I got to live with that. I was all over the place. <laughs> you got some ones, though, Vicky. You got some ones. You got a lot of ones, actually. Yeah. All right, that's good. You want to you wanna sing? I don't know. Wanna drop don't... a note? You kind of look like Alicia Keys back in the day. Do you got an Ali Alicia Keys song? Um, not an Alicia Keys song. Um, what I mostly like to sing is, um, I don't know if people listen to it, but her name is, um, what's her name? Sarah Batiskelly, I think. Um, but I don't, it. she's like country, like, like basically. But I don't, okay. I think I'm just too nervous. You, you, no, please you do sure? it for me. You sure? <laughs> you gonna leave her hanging? She just, she just dropped a bar. You can hit the Ooh. high note. And we have the chat, you know what I mean? Who it could be an A and R in here right now. Maybe you want to sign you. Who knows? That saying, do it for us. Do it. Do Let's it. Get it. Do oh, it. Oh, all right, all right, all right. All right. Let me let me get myself together. Here we go. Oh, clear okay. throat. Clear throat. <clears throat> all right. If I'm a little, you know, rusty, it's because I don't sing a lot. But you know, I let's still... make a song together real quick. <laughs> Okay, let me drink. Go ahead. Do you, yeah, yeah, it's nerve wracking, right? Hey, she's gonna drink a little bit of water and uh, she's gonna get to it. So, this is one of my favorite songs that I like to sing. Um, Who's it by? It's by the singer I just said. I don't know if anyone listens oh, to Sarah her. Girl. But okay. Yeah, um, I don't know if anybody listens to her, but um, I always sing it like my talent shows in high school and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, okay. Okay, let's hear it. Abby, please, I'm nervous. We got two over 200 people in here looking at you right now. <laughs> you can't see them, this, so. I got no views. You good. Nobody in here watching nothing. All right. Whew. Okay. Oh, my goodness. I'm so nervous. Come on, yo. You got this. Close your eyes if you have to. But tell me. Yeah. Yeah. Something always brings me back to you. It never takes too long, no matter what I say or do. Could still bring close here when I'm all alone. I don't remember the rest of the song because okay. I'm so nervous. Okay, I'm so, so good. nervous. I can hear, I can hear it in your. You voice. have right. you got it. Nervous. Like got a little voice there. It's like some a little soulful, a little bit chat. 
I ain't gonna be the one to judge, but chat put a, I put like, a it's okay for criticism. Facts. I appreciate it. Chat, put a one in the chat <laughs> if you think it's fire. Put a two in the chat if you think she need to retire. Let's go. Let's it's see what the, when you're nervous. Let's see what the, the chat saying. My whole no voice changed. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, the chat. This dude put one one one. Don't just Don't, say it because I'm pretty. Please. Oh yeah, they they. I mean, they saying. Oh, you got one. You, got you saying a one. Code, but you're getting a lot of ones right now. You are getting ones. Okay, well, uh, looks like chat and like maybe fifty fifty. Who knows? But or more ones than. I'm a little rusty. I'm gonna admit it, but. Fair I tried, enough, but you know, I was brave enough to try. I tried yeah. at least. You that's were brave. You were brave. So that's <laughs> that's very good. So uh, let's get the podcast started. Uh, thank y'all for tuning in on a late night on it on a Sunday late night. Uh, once again, if you have any questions for the ladies, send in a super chat on YouTube. So uh, the people on Facebook, I know y'all like to comment and stuff, but if you want your comments to be read. Um, then you have to log on to YouTube, No Fugazi Podcast, go to YouTube, and then you could send in a super chat and I'll read your comment. Um, other than that, I know y'all had some questions actually. Let's do y'all questions first. Let's go with Vicky. You always got good questions. Okay. What question <laughs> do you have? And we'll go around a panel. So should couples have access to each other's phones and social media accounts? Ooh, good question. Let's start with Trish. You got 50 years of experience. I really don't think you should. I really don't think you should because basically if you find something, what you're going to do? Is it going to change the outcome of the relationship? You know what I mean? Like, okay. And besides that, if you don't trust somebody enough to, to have to be monitoring their phones and their social media, like what kind of relationship is that anyway? True. Okay, fair. That's a fair assessment. All right. So Trish is saying no, because uh, what good comes from it? Yeah. Uh, let's go on to <laughs> Hennessy. What do you think about that? When you say access, is it can I have your password access or if I'm on your phone taking pictures and I feel like going on your social um, have access? Like you just have access. To you got full, like full access. Yeah. Yeah. Passwords and all. Like, yeah, password, like giving your passwords and stuff. I'm going to go with what Trish said because I feel like if I trust you enough, you shouldn't feel weird if I'm on your phone. And if I feel like going on your social media, I can do that, but not to look for anything, but to feel like I should trust you enough to just basically, you know, be on your phone. Like, mm -hmm. and to be honest with you, I'm not some, I'm not somebody that even goes on somebody's phone if i'm your partner but i know other people feel like it's okay to do so and like she said if i trust you enough then that that just says what it is obviously if i don't trust you that's why you're going through my things and if you do do something like or if you are doing something the only person you're lying to is yourself at the end of the day and okay you know like Fair enough so you're saying that like Trish said, um, you, I don't, agree with you her. don't think they really should have access because what's, what's going to come from it? And then you explained your reason why. Okay, cool. And what about you, Vicky? Um, like, I'm the type of person, like me personally, like if you want to use my phone, like, and you're my partner, I'll give you my password. Like, I don't really care about you having access to my phone or having access to my social media. Um, do I feel like if you're asking for it, like continuously like because you want to see like if i'm doing something then like i feel like that's just like an invasion of privacy and if you have respect for your partner then you won't do that um okay. but like if they wanted to use my phone like i wouldn't hesitate to give them my password and my stuff is already logged in so like i don't have nothing to hide basically got you okay cool have yeah. you ever seen those accounts that say like two like like a couple like like Jim and Janet's oh like the a, couples um, and a joint count <laughs> together joint accounts. I always wonder who cheated to make that happen mm -hmm. because <laughs> somebody had to cheat to make that kind of an account where it's like both of them oh you mean the joint accounts yeah. mm -hmm. 
Okay, uh, that's that's a little funny. I feel like because every single person that I know that has one, there's a possibility that somebody had cheated. That's the first thing I think. I'm like, why do you have a joint account? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll give my take on this. Um, I think it's totally different. I think um, it's 100. percent I think a man should have access to the woman's phone, full access. Um, in regards to the woman. Eh, the woman doesn't really need to have access to the man's phone. But, uh, I mean, if the man wanted her to, then, yes, the man is the leader of the relationship. So he dictates the terms of the relationship. And he granted her the relationship, and he and she accepted it. So it's up to the man. You know what I mean? So, uh, and the reasons why a man should have access to the woman's phone, but it, it doesn't have to be mandatory in the other way, is because, uh, well, one, <clears throat> the man is leading the relationship. It's like, hard, I'll say it, uh, women are kind of like kids, in a sense. In a sense. In a oh sense. Oh, boy. Right? Uh, not saying that you're kids, but in a sense where if, okay, I'm a man and I have kids, right? If a man is leading the relationship, um, he needs to know certain things to be able to protect the woman and provide for the woman. Mm -hmm. So part of his responsibility, uh, he needs some authority and that authority would be access to the phone. So his responsibility is protecting her. All you ladies want a man to protect you, right? So the authority would be, okay, well, I need some access. You get what I'm saying? To protect you, protect you from yourself and protect the relationship as well. Because, yeah, you got outside influences. You got, you know, women get the way more attention than females get. Also, ease, make sure you get it back and forth on the ladies, too. Um, women get a whole lot more attention than men get. And it's not about him being insecure. It's about him protecting the relationship. And, I mean, <clears throat> let's just keep it real. If the man is masculine enough and leading the relationship, the woman is an investment. So he has to protect his investment. You want to know certain things. Um, that's what I truly think. Now, all men may not agree with this, but I would say most men that are leading relationships and are masculine, protecting and providing, and their woman don't got to work and he's doing everything, uh, yeah, he may want access, but he may not even ever check. That's the other thing. So the other thing is that, yeah, the man should have access but it's not saying that the man has to always be checking. Mm. But if he senses something or maybe wants to see something, the access just should be granted to him is what I'm saying, right? I'm not saying that a man should just be always on his girl phone, like looking and, and seeing things. Eh, like, well, why are you looking? What is she doing? Or what are you doing that's internally <clears throat> uh, making you put this on the woman? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Usually when someone has ulterior motives and they're doing dirt themselves then deep down inside they feel guilty so they start to think well you know i'm not pure this person can't be either you get what i'm saying so they're looking if the other person is doing stuff so yeah and i'll land my plane there any points of contention with what i said what does it make sense uh, yeah uh, what you got no you're good you uh, no i was gonna say it makes sense cool. that's why i was saying like if they want access to my phone then yeah it's, like i don't really like yeah, i wouldn't hesitate yeah. yeah and what about you i was gonna say what about if it's for um lesbians or gays who leads a relationship there yeah that's a little of, tricky because well not tricky i mean that's just out of my realm of that's do whatever they do <laughs> and so they, they're already in a yeah yeah i mean <laughs> it's a little tricky <laughs> not no they're already in a category of them of their self they're already doing things that's that i don't necessarily agree with or would uh promote anyway mm -hmm. so they could do anything they're already doing something that i think is immoral so go ahead and do other uh, other immoral you might as well do other immoral things if you're doing that Truly, I, I believe. <laughs> if you're going to take that path, you might as well take all the paths. <laughs> you might as well do it all. <laughs> That's my belief. But other other opinions could be much differently. Yeah. Hey, we got a super chat that came in by Ray. Uh, dang. What did this say? Ray President. 
I guess that's what it says. Yeah, Ray President. Uh, he sent in twenty dollars. He says, as a thirty nine year uh, thirty nine year divorced father of two, I've enjoyed your podcast in learning the differences in male and female desires and values over the over time. Keep up the great work. Oh man, I appreciate that, man. And thank you for the twenty dollars, man. Uh, you know, this is what we do here at No Fugazi. We talk about male and female intersexual dynamics, and uh, we break things down. Just how, how I kind of broke it down now. It's a preference, I think. Um, you know, some it's, it's up to your preference if a man wants to have access to the woman's phone or not. But I truly believe a man still should have access to the phone. Doesn't mean he should be looking in it all the time, like I said. But if he wants to, you know. It, the access it. should be granted. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> good question, Vicky. You got anything else? Yeah. I have you probably like, do. Let's get into yeah, one of the questions. I have like five other questions. My questions? Yeah, you have a question? I do, actually. Let me just double check. Um, oh, sorry. Um, I had it in my other notes. Um... Have you ever? Well, Ooh. I'm asking to like anybody. Oh, this is a have you ever question. <laughs> okay. Have you ever had to step away from the relationship for your own good? And how did it feel? Okay, good question. Let's start with Vicky. Have you ever had to step away from a relationship for your own good? And also, how did it feel? Um, so yes, like for my own well-being, yes. Um, so I was with a guy and in the beginning, it literally felt like he was perfect and I thought I was going to marry him and everything was going really good. And then his mask fell off. He was an extreme narcissist, very physically abusive and at first like i was i was actually very submissive to him i listened to everything he said uh -huh. i stayed home because i really wasn't allowed to work um so i stayed home i cooked cleaned uh, the only time i was out at the house was going to visit him on a break on like when he was at work yeah and um even like you know as time went on like his beatings were progressing um but I still would try to stay and like work it out with him. And I know it sounds stupid, but at the time I didn't realize that like it was me not having respect for myself. And I had like, I really didn't have any self love or like self worth or anything like that. So um, the last time was like the worst. And, and you, that was so pretty much you saying, so what's the, so her question is, have you ever had to step out of a relationship for your own good? So right. what was, what was he putting you with? through again be a little bit like specific with it uh, domestic violence okay so he's physically yeah okay. yeah that's what Phys i said okay. he got physically abusive like oh, okay you said physical I, I, I thought you just said abusive so he oh, got no. physically, physically abusive yeah. with you okay and you had to step out of that for your own good mm -hmm. i mean yeah that's good tough. job yeah because <laughs> it's hard when like you have a trauma bomb with somebody because like you know you were addicted to the love bombing in the beginning and that's what they do they love bomb you and at the time like i've done a lot of like internalizing and self like yeah. work on myself and i realized i was a codependent person before so um let me ask you a question actually uh, how long did you stay in the relationship with the physical physical abuse um so the first three months we were good so we were together for eight months so um yeah five five months i dealt with abuse okay so five months you dealt with it and in that time of five months was it like you're stuck in between a rock and a hard place because you said that he was doing a lot of love bombing? So I'm guessing mm -hmm. after the abuse, then would come the bombing, the love bombing. Yeah. Right? And like I never like I never put up a fight against them because if I did, then it would be a lot worse. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, you don't, don't want to fight no man. No. So yeah, like, yeah, like I would cry a lot because like sometimes there would be times like we would have like conversations and like he would just be staring at me and then he'd be like, I really love you. Like, I really want to give you the world. And like when you're looking in his eyes, like 
it felt like it was real. Like it felt like it was yeah. heartfelt. So let me ask you a question. Um, we don't have to get too specific on it. Then we can move it right along. Cause I know it's a touchy topic. Anytime you're talking about anything with abuse, you know what I mean? Um, is there anywhere, anywhere in that five month span where, you know, you can look back and say, Hmm, maybe this is why he's doing it. Well, the reason why he started doing it was because I found out that he was cheating. Okay, <laughs> so he was pretty much just a narcissist. He was doing a reverse psychology game on you. Yes. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and you still stay for five months? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you take accountability for that? Or are you putting? Someone yeah, I do. In? I don't play yeah. like I don't play victim because I'm the one who chose to stay. I mean, I don't feel like I deserve. Of course, he's you know. accountable for putting his hands on you and stuff. But mm -hmm. I'm talking about the stretch of the five months because it could happen once. Accountability could smack you in the face and you could have left then. But I'm talking about throughout that time. Do you still put because that's the only way you'll truly grow from it. Mm -hmm. If you take full accountability and say, hey, why did I let it happen? One, two, three, and, and stay this entire right. time. That's and you why did I said, do that, right? You took accountability? Mm -hmm. That's okay. why I said, like, I like I had to do a lot of self-internalization. Like, why did I do this to myself? And I realized the reasons why I did that, you know? Got so you. It, it is partially my fault for staying. Yeah, uh, audience, fellas, I know we got a lot of men now watching. Uh, don't hit women. The reason why I do this podcast, one of the reasons why I do the podcast, so you can understand women nature mm -hmm. and so you don't so you'll never have to you won't be mad at them of what they'll never be to you if that makes sense a lot of men don't understand female nature so then they they'll hold resentment or be angry or be physical abuse or just be actual um you know what i mean woman haters what is it miss miss misogynistic <laughs> to actually be misogynistic because they don't fully understand women. So they'll, they hate them uh, for what they'll never be to them. And a part of this podcast is, you know, displaying and showing female nature. So, cause think about it when you fully understand something, uh, you don't get mad at things. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Like when you have an emotional reaction to things is usually because uh, you don't really understand it. <laughs> But then once you understand it, it's like, okay, I got this. And females happen to be complex creatures. And I'm not taking no uh, accountability away from the dude. He's a, he's a, he should get knocked out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's a, he's a punk. Any dude that put their hand on females. But yeah, men, don't hit chicks, bro. It's not worth it. That's very, it's the lowest and most feminine thing that you could do. Moving right along. Uh, Trish. Same question. You want to ask it again? I kind of forgot. <laughs> Have you ever walked from a relationship for your own good? And how did it make you feel? I did, but it, it is a lot different than her situation. I was in a situation ship for eight years and I realized I'm never going to get married. I'm never going to live with them. I'm never going to do anything more than what we're doing now. So I'm like, you know, I need to step back out of that situation and get myself out of that situation ship and basically start over again. And I kind of felt real empowered by just leaving that mm -hmm. whole situation. Okay, cool. All right. So, all right, that's yours. And what about yourself? You can answer the question. Um, yes, I have. Um, it was mostly because I needed to do what was um, best for me. I feel like it takes a lot for somebody to sit here. And mine is a little, you know, been... It, a bit it's a bit different from hers but um sometimes even though two people can love each other and care about each other very much if they don't feel like certain things just aren't working out even though you love each other very much sometimes the best thing for each other is to walk away even if it's just taking a break mm -hmm. i don't want to call it a break but i'm just saying like some people sometimes just need time apart you know mm -hmm. to kind of like get themselves together and then down the line if it's really meant to be because i believe in that if it's meant to be then it will be then when the time is right if you guys still care for each other and actually have done the work individually then you know 
Okay. Nothing's it's it's not impossible, but yeah, I had to do walk that for away. myself and walk away and do what's best for me and figure out things that I need to figure out um healing and things I've gone through in my childhood that affected the relationship sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I feel like things that you've gone through in your childhood can really um how do I say it? Not define you, but it affects what you go through in relationships and it can affect your partner. Like Mm -hmm. whatever it is that you went through, what your father put you through, what your mother put you through, whatever it is Mm -hmm. can affect it. And if you're not too much aware of it, then it becomes toxic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all agree with that too, ladies? Yes. What you went through in the past affects your current situation. Well, can can have an effect on your current situation. Yeah, I feel like people harbor, and I, I actually posted a story about this earlier, and I was saying how, you know, people harbor like these negative feelings. Yeah. And it actually runs their life, even if they don't realize it, because, you know, hurt people hurt people. And I feel like people normalize toxicity so much and they don't seem to realize that it comes from within both partners. Like if you're both like that, like yeah. I feel like y'all got to. You know, you got to be aware. Yeah. Be more aware. Let me ask you a question. So you well, I asked you a question. So you said that, you know, the past defines mm-hmm. a person uh, to a degree. Mm-hmm. Um, body count. Do you think a woman's body count matters? No. Okay. I feel like her past is her past and that's that's her past. You can't change that and she can't change it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. here's where the logic fail is with most individuals. Right. So if you say that your past, what you've been through in the past as a kid, as a teenager, mm-hmm. affects how you are in your current situation, um, then the body count, if you collect, rack up some body counts in your past, you're saying that it doesn't affect the current person? I'm saying that I'm going to give that's you... That's like a, uh, not an oxymoron, but that's just a contradiction. contradiction. Okay. So <laughs> basically what I say is... Um, let me give you an example. So, um, cause I like to watch documentaries. So there was one where this kid, um, he grew up, he ended up, um, beating up every one of his girlfriends and it's because his father used to beat him and his father used to be his mother. Okay. And so I guess he saw that as it being okay. And then that carried that whatever he went through carried that with himself those motives exactly those motives to the current exactly situation. because he wasn't taught properly so, that you're not supposed to hit a woman gotcha. and so let me ask you a question a woman that is being promiscuous she's sleeping with you know maybe she has a hot girl summer or she's just sleeping with man after man and let's just say it's one year she sleeps with kyle ryan um Ease, uh, Byron, and uh, Tyler, right? Within this one year. It's a multitude of men. You don't think that her past situation of having sex with those men would impact her current situation with another man? Mm-hmm. Like how, 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 like you just used your example of <laughs> the guy you know, being abused. Yeah. And then now he's abusing people. Mm -hmm. So if the girl was letting men dominate her in her past and now she's with a current man, you don't think that her motives, not is not going to be the same, but just her as a person, you don't think like it would affect it at all? I think it would affect it in a way that, mm, I guess it's just, probably the way that she thinks like if she's just somebody that decided to sleep with so and so as many times as she wanted to and now she's in a committed relationship um it depends how she's viewing that guy is she viewing him as let me ask you another question is it only sex so like you said that what people do in their past right it affects their current and their future but you excluded sex from that so my question is, okay, sex is included, excluded from that. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else you would exclude yeah. from that mm. that would affect their current and their future from what they've done in the past? No, I would think it was just it's it's everything. Like 
emo it's it's not even just sexual i would say like emotional trauma uh, not emotional no let me let me ask the question again so remember you said that what someone does in their past it affects their current and their future right so my question and then and then i asked you i said okay you y'all ladies agree with that everyone said yeah so then you said then i said well what about sex you said no you said body count doesn't matter it wouldn't affect the woman you know what she what she done in her past that's not going to affect her now now i'm not even saying anything yet i just want to know where your mind is mm -hmm. so now i'm saying that okay so what what someone does in her past it affects their current and their future besides sex that's what you think mm -hmm. now my question is what else would be besides that like would it okay like say if they're drinking mm -hmm. would drinking not be one of them or would drinking be one of them or you get what i'm saying like is there anything else that if you did something in the past would it not affect your current and your future situation or is it just only sex the only reason why i'm saying like the body count wouldn't matter is yeah. if like because she's only sleeping with that person so whoever it is that she slept with she's not sleeping with them anymore and those people don't matter but people that she has slept with probably maybe messed up with her mind mentally maybe she i don't know for some reason decided that she'd just rather sleep with multiple people because she said fuck love and okay. decided to do that so yeah let me help you out a little bit so you was able to use critical thinking skills when it was with you used the two examples when you, you talked about yourself. Yeah, I yeah. was in this past, you know, I was going through things then, but you know, the past, you know, it affects the current and it affects the future. And then you use an example, like a show you watched a documentary. You said the dude was in a, uh, being abused by his father. So then he started to then abusing people currently and it went throughout mm -hmm. his future. Right. And you use critical thinking skills as, and you said like, yeah, the father was hitting him and then, you know, doing this. And then he started doing this mm -hmm. and this to other people. So since you're able to use critical thinking skills with that, why can't you use critical thinking skills when it comes to a woman's body count? What exactly? You, you're trying to exclude all of those things that when a woman is sleeping around, you kind of just saying like, yeah, well, it doesn't matter. But there's other things that you can. No, include. I mean, I'm saying it. I'm not saying I don't care if if I were to like if no, I were to true. know. I'm just just generally speaking, the, my point was: Does a woman's body count matter? And what? So do you think that it'll? Affect what kind of extent? Like what exactly? Why? I'm gonna ask you. Sure. Why would it matter to you if you know you have a woman and you know her body count? What what exact? What makes it matter? why is it important yeah well before i <laughs> yeah like i want to understand so i can understand what you Ease. so do you i got you East. i got it um go ahead you can put the cam on me before i ask the before i answer the question <laughs> the audience knows my answer <laughs> oh boy they know my answer <laughs> and i can break it down in 30 seconds to you on why it matters but the point of <laughs> this interaction here between me because it's your first time on a podcast so i want you to leave with something from the podcast so i'm not going to attack you at all and i'm not even going going to attack your uh point of view that's not the point of it the point of it is just to try to see if i could make you take the red pill i, right? have, I have a have you ever question. seen the matrix no yes have you seen the matrix yeah so you know when they take the red pill they unlock and now they're outside of the matrix they're in a real I got world. a new vision a new yeah. perspective yeah so let me ask you the questions and let's see if you finally get it and then, yeah i'm gonna let you go and trish i'm gonna let you go but this is good it's your first time here so uh another question for you right so you're pretty much saying what i want you to do is this you were able you know that what someone do in they pass um affects their current situation and their future Right. I'm going to just help you out now, but I'm not going to give my point of view yet. And l let me I'm going to say something that should make you open up and take the red pill. OK, <laughs> so let's see what someone does in their past okay. affects their current and their future. You fully understand that and you know that. But when it comes to body count, a woman's body count, her sexual past, you saying that it doesn't affect her current and it doesn't affect her future. Now, here's the red pill. The only reason why you're saying that is because 
you have uh it's a you've been socially constructed to believe that shaming women is a bad thing that's the point you've been i'll say it again you've been constructually socialized <laughs> socially constructed to believe that shaming women is a bad thing now i'll tell you this take more of the red pill shame is a good thing without shame you know that killer that was uh that was abused that you talked about in the documentary he was abused and then he started then to abuse other people if we didn't shame him we wouldn't even lock him up if no one felt shame right. for it right um if he didn't feel any shame did he ever stop doing it killing people or no think why think why he never stopped doing it because he never felt any shame right so people will continue to make poor decisions and do bad behavior if they don't feel any shame or if people don't shame them to then make them feel like well what the freak yeah this is wrong you get what i'm saying so shaming is a good thing generally speaking right mm -hmm. so what i want you to do take the dose of the red pill and think critically think about it now remove the shame from the woman right there's no more you don't have to you know uh coddle the girl you don't right. have to coddle women no more you get shame right because i'm sure you don't want to you let's do you want to have a whole lot of penises in you <laughs> you don't right and there's reasons why you don't right and you know those reasons you get it right so now use your own moral compass right and you could go ahead and you could shame a woman. It's, it's not even shameful. It's just the truth. But Does why a, is no, it no, shameful? Listen, listen. Let me ask you the question again. Let's see if it helps. <laughs> Does a woman's body count matter? I'm sorry. No, I don't think it really does. Like, I I don't understand why. Why, why is she oh, being man. shamed? Like, I don't. We doomed in 2023, guys. No. I tried to do it the, the good way. Listen, I've been trying to <laughs> listen, audience, chat. I know y'all going crazy right now, chat in the chat. I'm trying to do it a different way to help women understand. Like Go ahead. To a certain extent. I want to say it matters to a certain extent. Like certain extent. Okay, yeah. now I'll just speak, right? It matters to every extent. Why? And it matters more to the woman than it does to the man, right? Men, we have a natural pro propensity not even a tendency because a proclivity is a tendency but this is naturally in us to want something pure right so the reason why men admire a woman that wasn't sleeping around with you right. know all the guy all those guys in her past is because she's just more pure right it's just like we want to show the girl the world and how can we show her the world if she doesn't experience the world with every other dude make sense so that's just an example there so men we just have a natural propensity to want a pure woman and it doesn't have to be a virgin of course we would all want a virgin and take a virgin um but a lower body count the low the lowest the body count is is best for a man that's just what makes us feel good right uh let's kind of compare it to money finances with a girl you would okay a dude making thirty thousand, okay versus a dude making 500,000. It's like, wow, you feel real good about that, mm -hmm. about that, right? It's just like the finances when it comes how how you look at finances on a man, like, ooh, yeah, he get into the bag. It's just, it's, and it's not even the money, but it's his traits that, uh, that it takes to make the money. Like, he's more attractive to you, right? And how we look at a woman, like, with a low body count that, that wasn't promiscuous, like, ooh, you have some sexual temperance, right? You, uh, you, you, you held your body as a temple and you wasn't just out there being promiscuous with it. Get what I'm saying? So we hold that with that same value, just like you hold a man that has this like financials together with that value. Make sense? It no? does. Okay, go ahead. No, what you got? It does make sense, but I feel like it's kind of not fair because like, this is about to get in a bigger, deeper conversation. Um, so, I feel like real quick. Uh, yeah, what did you want to say? Yeah, let's get the ladies on here. What y'all think on this? I was just saying, like, like for me personally, I think, like, it would show you how the girl, like, how she feels about herself, right? Like, you how know, from a man's point of view. Yeah, like a man's point of view. So, like, if a girl is just sleeping around, like, with a bunch of people, I mean, it just like shows you that she doesn't really 
that she don't really care about herself. She don't respect herself. That too, yeah. Yeah, that's what it shows. So you got to think about it. How people, we don't really change. Normally how we do one thing is how we do a multitude of other things, right? So if she's out there, you know, and you got to think sex for a woman, she's allowing other human beings inside her. Mm -hmm. It's much different for a man. We go in there, we smack something around, we dominate. Right. The woman is being dominated. She has to submit to multiple individuals. So with a woman, now I'll just speak and tell me if you get some game from this. Uh, when a woman, in order for you to have sex with a man, you have to like the guy to a high degree. Right. You yourself, Hennessy. You want me to be honest? <laughs> you can give the degree. What degree do you have to like the guy to have sex with someone? Do you say a mid degree, high degree, low degree? What's your degree? If you're if if you're cute, if um you have a, a good personality, okay, and um that's about it. Okay, like, so cute. Okay, so Hennessy, you're saying cute, good personality, and well, what else was it? That's it, right? Yeah, cute, cute and good personality. So I'm sure a lot of cute guys with good personalities approached you, but you still didn't have sex with them, right? No. Okay, cool. So you're still more selective than that. That means that, so what I'm saying is you'll meet a cute guy that has a good personality, but maybe he'll say the wrong thing or his breath will be a little stinky. Something will go wrong with the vibe. You just don't feel the vibe. So you would disqualify him. Cause if not, you would just have, your body count would be like, you know, 200. I don't think it is, is it? Yeah, it isn't 200. So <laughs> not at all. Think about it. Right. So you hold the key to sex. All women hold the key to sex. And since you you're having sexual temperance, meaning that you're just not having sex with anyone, you actually I'll just let you know, all women do. Uh, it's a high degree. You just don't have sex with anyone. You have to like the guy to a high degree. He has mm -hmm. to meet your standards. Right. And every woman standards could be a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? So since the dude has to meet your standard, that means you actually, every guy that you had sex with, there was emotional ties. Mm -hmm. Every guy. You did not have sex with any guy that you didn't have any type of emotional tie with. Now, there's a small emotional tie and a bigger emotional tie. You know the differences between right. it. But still, you had to like a guy. Now, ask me the same question. Do I have to like a girl to have sex with her? Do you have to like a No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have to. A man doesn't have to like the woman at, at all. all. At all. Actually, to keep it honest with you, we could hate, hate a girl. Guts. We could hate the girl and still clap them cheeks to death. That is horrible. Yep. It's not horrible. How do you get turned on by that? Okay, yep. well, it's not horrible. <laughs> it's the difference between men and women. You get what I'm saying? Sheesh. So now, now let's package this up, right? Let's package it up. Since now you know that you're not special. And all girls act just like you. They have to like the guy to a certain degree right. in order to have sex with the guy. Now, think about it, right? A promiscuous woman with a high body count. She, you know that she had to at least like the guy to a, to a good degree in order to allow this dude to sleep with her. And she racked up a lot of these dudes. So now she got emotional ties with this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, 35 guys now. How do you think that doesn't affect her current situationship and her future situationship? Okay, okay, now I'm really understanding the red pill? it. You took it? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> chat. I got it. Oh, we got I you get what, I get your point of view now. Okay. okay. So when you think about it, it's not necessarily shaming the woman. This is the part when you critically think about it because mm -hmm. you got to understand that I'm not ease in the back, the producer. He's a guy. We ain't different when it comes to our mating strategies and what we look for in a woman and what we need to have sex with a woman. It could be a little bit differences. You get what I'm saying? But it isn't that much of a difference, meaning that you may be fine with a guy that's, you know, you know, five, eight. But Vicky may be like, nah, I need to do that six, two or above to, to get these cheeks. You get what I'm saying? So it could be a little bit difference between the female, like her preferences, but that doesn't even mean anything because you still have to like the guy to a high degree in order to allow someone to slide in between your soul gaps, toss it up, smack it, and flip it around. Well, if you have a high body count, then I would assume that you have a low degree because yeah. you're just 
You just well, be well, no. So that's the effects of it. The woman with the high body count, she's broken. That's why it uh, does affect her current situation exactly. and her future situation. So she has a high, think about it. She, she's unable to pair bond with her current mate and her future mates. Mm -hmm. So the probability goes down each time a woman sleeps with a man for her to be able to pair bond and truly love a man. Mm -hmm. And there's scientific studies on this. It was studies done that uh, they found that once a woman reaches a body count of five, five men, it goes down to, it drops down to 20% that she'll, she'll, she'll be able to maintain a long-term relationship. So it's only a 20% chance she'll be able to man maintain a long-term relationship if the body count is over five. For her? For or her. Like like, yeah, like so, literally for her. So she won't be able to stay with a man. She won't be able to stay with a man. She will be unsatisfied. Oh. She won't be able to. She, it'll be hard for her to settle. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. So and that's the thing, right? Women, you have to take this. Your body is your temple, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to take this into consideration. I, I see you looking now. She's taking a dose of the red pill. Hey, we got her. Um, I get it. <laughs> she get it now. Okay, so let me ask you the question again. And I could break it down in a multitude of other ways. The chat seen me do it plenty of times, but I'm trying to do it in ways where it's digestible for you. Does body count matter? Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> we got one. Just saying it just to agree. I, I actually understand you exactly understand. where you're coming from now. Now I understand why there's it's going to affect... It's going to affect her current exactly. and it's going to affect her future. And it isn't really, if you truly, once you understand that, it don't even feel shameful now, right? No, it feels just, it she feels had truthful. an experience. Now yeah. she's got to deal with it, learn from that experience, understand what happened, but she has, to, she's carrying that with her. She'll always carry yeah. it with her. And guess what? It affects the future guys too. Yeah. Yeah. But really it affects her the most because it'll be hard for her to settle. She'll be comparing and contrasting with the other guys in the past based off of height, status, income, and, you know, sex. penis size is sex. You get what I'm saying? So she'll be comparing, contrasting with the past guys. So if the current guys isn't measuring up, she's like, Dang, Byron used to tear this up. Tony not doing it right. Ah, uh, then she's gonna disqualify Tony. Then she's gonna, but Byron, he out. She she just don't really like him like that anymore. Then she's gonna get on with uh Kyle. Kyle, yeah, he 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 knocking it down better than Byron, but he don't got the finances like uh like uh give me another name, East. Nick. Like Nick got. Nick had more finances. So then she was with Nick. Nick D game was okay, but Nick had that bag. He'll spend it on her. So now she with this other dude, but it's like, ah, you don't got the finances, but you hitting it right. But it's only going to last a short period of time. Then she'll get with Tyrone. Right. Guess what? Tyrone got everything. Tyrone got the money, the muscles, the game, the frame. He got it all. He got the, the sex game on point. But guess what? Tyrone just hit it and left you. Now you've been alpha widowed. Now you're done. <laughs> now you like Jada Pinkin talking about Tupac all the time. You know what I'm saying? You like Jada Pinkin like, Tupac, I want you back where you at, Tupac. So that's the other thing. The more sexual partners you experience, the harder it's going to be. It's, the harder it is for you to peer bond with a future mate, meaning that you'll be able to love, respect, and admire. Admire is one of the most important things because that's when you look up to a man. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, he's the big dog. This daddy. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Uh, chat, where we at, man? Y'all got any questions? Let's see what the chat doing right now. I wasn't in here. What is looking like in the chat, East? We got any super chats? Uh, let's see. Um, they just voicing their opinion. Okay, we got a super chat that came in. Um, okay, I see ice underscore 513. I'm going to get to your question in a little bit. Um... Let's finish, because we was on a question, actually. We were? And then we... <laughs> what was the question? Uh, oh, she had to go, right? No, wait. You were the last one. I was the last one. Oh, you okay. were the last yeah. one. Okay, you were the last one. So let me just get to... Uh, so Ice underscore 513, he says, ask the girls what is a boundary that they don't... that they didn't want to follow but did because you were in a relationship. That's a good question. Great question. Uh, and thanks for that $5 super chat, um, Ice513. Let's start with Trish. I think so, 
Can you explain? Yeah, that? I'll please. Ask it again. I need, I need that like one more time. Yeah. Got you. So, uh, Ice underscore five thirteen. He asks. He says, "Ask the girls, what is a boundary that they didn't want to follow, but they did because they were in a relationship? So, what's a boundary that you just mm -hmm. like?" Uh, like you normally didn't follow this, like the boundary, but since you're in a relationship, you like, okay, maybe the way you dress, for example. That and like, I have a lot of males that I'm friends with. And if I'm in a relationship, I won't talk to any of those male friends. Good. Because basically it makes it difficult for the person to be in a relationship with that person. Okay. Oh. Hey, uh, 50 years on the planet, she knows what she's talking she about. Knows something. She knows. <laughs> <laughs> so she don't do any guy friends. Hey, uh, I already know you look like you want to keep all your guy friends. We're going to have to what? run a pill you out of that. Yeah. <laughs> I only have one guy best friend. You keep him around when you're in a relationship? I do because he's like a big brother to me. It's not. I'm, I swear. Man. He is. No, I swear. Look, look. Who they call big bro? Big bro in it. Damn. <laughs> never looked at each other that way no, at all, no, ever, no. You never looked at him that way. He never looked at me he that never... way either, no. Okay, we real quick. We like brothers so, yeah, and yeah. sisters. Yeah, really brothers and sisters. Yeah. The... Hey, chat, should we do it, chat? Should we have her call? Yes, I'm sorry. Should we have her call? Ahead. No, he gonna have me asking them questions. Look, listen, <laughs> okay. listen. Okay. question on the call, too, like. Okay, chat, should we put a, put a one in the chat? <laughs> If you want us to have her call her guy friend and see if he's really her guy friend or he trying to clap them cheeks, put a two in the chat if you just want us to move on with the question. Let's see what they say. I bet you any money. Ask them to you want to go on a date? He's going to say yes. So chat, one and oh, they saying ones. They want it. They want it. Of course okay. they do. So look. So let's see if he answers. Okay, wait. Let me let you know what to say. Okay. All right, so this is what you got to do. Let me give you the rules real quick. So... One, when you call, you see this part right here, the mic? Look, you want to put it on speakerphone. Okay. You want to turn your volume all the way up, and you want to put it right there. Okay. And then also, though, this is what you're going to do, because we got to make it seem official. So when you call him, you got, what's his name? Mello. Mello. Okay, cool. So you're going to say, uh, what's up? Like, what's up, Mello? Uh, and he know you just broke up with your guy or no? Uh, girl. Oh, he was in a relationship with a girl? Yes. Oh, fair enough. Um, so, oh, he really don't care then. Oh. <laughs> look, okay, look, so he, okay, so you just, he knows you just broke up with your girl. He doesn't know because we don't talk a lot because he's in the perfect, army. Perfect, So this is what you're going to do, right? This is what you, and he, is he deported right now? Uh, I think so. I don't remember. I think so. Okay. This may be a little bit hard, chat, yeah. but we're we going to still try to get him to get a <laughs> yes. That's what, we're looking for some type of. Uh, reinsurance that's like, yeah, he's interested. So this is what you're going to do, right? So you're going to say, Mello, how, how are you? How you been? Da, da, da. He gonna Make it real short. How are you? Be like, listen, I'm just so emotional right now. Me and my girl just broke up. Da, da, da. And then after you say, you know, you and your girl just broke up, be like, I was thinking, so I always, like, why didn't me and you ever, like, get together? Like, why wasn't it a, ever me and you thing? And then let's see what he says. And then if he doesn't budge on that, I want you to then say, well, can it be a me and you? You trying to get it. Why are you trying to so feel you? You can text so him afterwards. You can text him afterwards and say, hey, it was all a joke, all, all game. <laughs> okay? So let me, let's let's go through it again. Chat, chat. We gonna, I'm going to bring it back to her again. So this is what you're going to do. And don't text him. I'm not. I'm going to call you. <laughs> we got her phone, Vicky. Make sure she's not texting him. Vic, look at it. Yeah, Vic, look at it. Don't be scared, Sorry. Vic. <laughs> no, she's not. Okay, cool. So let's walk through it again. You gonna call him? You gonna say, okay. "Hey, Mello, how are you?" He gonna be like, "Oh, I'm doing good." Then you gonna say, uh, "Hey, I just broke up with so and so," and I'm like so emotional right now. And he's gonna be like, "Oh, for real?" And then be like, "I just had a question. Like, why didn't me and you ever? Why couldn't me and you ever be a thing?" Oh let's see God. what he says. And if he doesn't budge, say, "Well, can we be a thing?" Then you gonna see if he's really your friend or not. Let's go. The chat got me done. Damn. All right. Let's see. Right here, speakerphone. Put it on loud. Turn it all the way up. I have to call him on Instagram live. It's okay, it's okay. <sighs> Turn it up more.
Yeah, I don't know if he's gonna answer. Mm, you call him no more on Instagram. Why you gotta call him on IG? I don't he... save them as on my phone. I I have okay. So me, I no, don't know, chat. No, Please, you put the camera for me. Phone and I don't remember what his nickname is on my phone. I swear. No chat. Who knows? She seemed a little fugazi with it. Chat. Serious. Okay, okay, yeah, all right. That's okay, okay, yeah. okay, everybody who's in my phone has a nickname to their name, so I don't mm -hmm. remember what I saved them as. But he's supposed to be your best friend. Like, you always had him as a friend, even when you was in a yes, relationship. But every single time that he would come to visit, I would change his contact name to something funny that he mentioned. That's mm -hmm. what I, then that's so when I told him. Funny things that y'all mentioned, yeah, he yeah. definitely want to clap them cheeks. No, he didn't. Never did. Okay. No. He was all always right. being very respectful. How, we could... Uh -uh, that's how, fishy. how tall? No, what? What? Not even. Forget all. Of, forget all of that, bro. He definitely want to clap. That's just. It is what it is. Oh my hey, goodness. Chad, uh, she failed. The dude ain't pick up. She trying to call the dude off Instagram. She probably really got his real number, but who knows? I do have his real number? You trying to get me caught up? Like, yeah, so you don't want to call the real number? I do, but I don't remember. Find it. No, I don't remember what I saved him as. I swear. How did your ex feel about your relationship with your best friend? She was fine with it. She trusted me. Yeah, that's because it's a there was a she girl on girl thing. Him. Yeah. No. Yes, yeah, when it's a girl on girl thing. Let me ask you a question. Oh, actually, man. I didn't know you were in a relationship with a girl. Uh, who was? Because I know you asked the question before, and I <laughs> didn't answer it because the type of question it was it right. really couldn't be answered. And then I was just like, ah, it's a little immoral anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, since we're on a topic, uh, who was? The top and who was the bottom? Meaning like that who was masculine? One. Yeah, the dominant one. She you was. Or her. She was. So you were more the girly girl. Yes. Now was she like a stud? Like a she dressed like a boy and all that? Yes. Oh. So you. Oh boy. Listen, listen, listen. <laughs> Let's not take. Don't take this offensive out. <laughs> but truthfully, be told. I don't think you. You not bisexual. No. Nah, nah, nah. You like niggas. No, I like bitches. You only like females, girls or you like guys too? Oh man, I go more towards girls. Like, but but the girls you go towards is the more of the studs, right? Yes. Okay, so if you and why do you tend to go with the girls that look like a guy, but they're not a guy, rather than a guy? What's the? Uh, it's just my preference. Like, I just rather date a woman who still. Dresses like a guy, but I treat her still like a queen. Okay, so it's a this is fair enough. It's okay to have a preference, but I'm trying to understand, mm -hmm. right? So what's the uh what gets me to go more towards women? Yeah, because think about it. Uh obviously if you're with a she's emulating everything a guy has, mm -hmm. right? So she's dressing like a guy, she definitely has a strap on, she got the strappy, right? She definitely oh come with God. the strap. <laughs> So she using uh, a, a guy's, a, a fake tool of a guy. So she's trying to emulate everything of a man, right? But you could take the red pill and get the real man. So my question is, it must be something where it's the chemistry, maybe some of the feminine energy that you like. What is it that to make me and the audience understand of why you prefer the studs over a real man? Um, emotional connection. Okay. Um, something that you just said, it just lost my, it's just like, okay, flew out of my mind. You could say it after I said it. So you said emotional connection. Yes. Well, that's not hard to find in the man, a guy that's mm. a charismatic guy that can raise you up and make you feel the vibes. It's not um, enough. Do you not, feel like not a woman. Do you feel like she's more understand, like she's more understanding because she's a woman? That, and I just... I love women. Like, I love okay, females. Like, I the female body. Too. Like, everything about them. I love it. True. I love women, too. I, I get what you're saying when you're saying that you want a woman. Because I'm a man and I only want women. So I understand that <laughs> when it's, like, the body. But my point is that the type of women that you're going for, right. they're emulating everything that a man is. Mm -hmm. They're not the feminine girls. You're going for the studs. So... Why are you attracted to the very feminine type women too, or no? Um, I find them very pretty, but I don't. I wouldn't like want to be in a relationship with them. Type okay, of thing. cool. So you wouldn't want to be in a relationship with a girly girl, 
you would prefer to be in a relationship with a because this is the thing uh critical thinking is having the ability to differentiate things mm -hmm. right um you know so you going with the studs instead of the feminine girl mm -hmm. so and i'm guessing what is it that the studs have over the feminine girls they still act like females. They still have... Um, no, no, no. What's different that the studs have over the feminine girls? Yeah, they still act like... Oh, um, yeah. I just... I guess it's just the way that they put outfits together as, like, when they dress like a guy. Like, I just... I like it because I'm also like that sometimes, too. Like, I'll dress like a stud sometimes. Okay. Like, tomboy-ish type of vibe. Okay, so you, so you so like the... I like it. The style. Now, is it because... Correct me if I'm wrong, but is one of the reasons why you're going for the studs over because let's be honest here a feminine woman usually her body is much better than the studs actually mm. you what the studs got the fatty. Like I'm the man. Man. she had the cheeks what Bro. <laughs> are you kidding me bigger than mine she got me tight oh, oh that's cool what i'm saying is the probability right oh. a, 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 <clears throat> a studs normally resemble the young ma's right they resemble it to a degree. Maybe they not be as big, but they resemble it to a degree, right? And what I'm saying is a feminine woman, and you got to think about it, what they eat, they work out, and all of these other things. The feminine woman, she's more softer usually, right? And, well, I don't know because I've never been with a stud, so correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> so the feminine woman would usually would be more softer, and more feminine and her body would the waist would be a little bit more tighter because the the studs isn't caring about their waist the studs is eating everything and yeah we out here we outside with it that's the studs i don't know what studs you talking about but the studs <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not kidding i'm not like fucking around like i'm, I'm being honest like you're being honest with yes so you, the, the women i've been with like their bodies are on point okay for glass Yes, very so pretty. So you're choosing the good studs, I guess. Who knows? Great studs. All right, all right, cool. Um, truth be told, I still think that if you meet the right, a uh, right guy, masculine guy, mm -hmm. that's very charismatic and stuff, you won't even. You'll be like, why was I ever even talking to them? Um, the studs thing is, before. like, I get the ache quick with guys, very quick, super quick. Like mm -hmm. anything. Is that did it? Does it have anything to do? We was talking about the past. Does it have anything to do with your past? You not maybe having a father figure, or are you not maybe having a good example of a man? No, neither. Okay, so your father was in your life. Yes. Dang, what the? Yeah, all right. Well, That's what I'm saying. Like I just come to some conclusion. Anyway, let's move it on. Let's move it right along. Uh, where were we at, Vicky? <laughs> um. Oh, we was on the uh, the super chat, the question, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because we didn't the finish the boundary that. question. Something about setting a boundary that you didn't want to set. Okay, so all right. Okay. And we and Trish, you answered it, and we on the Vicky, right? We on the Vicky. All right. So let me bring up the question real quick. So the question is, uh, what is a boundary that uh, they didn't want to follow, but they did follow in a relationship? So Trish, I know you said um, guy friends, mm -hmm. and what about you, Vicky? I never, like, I never, like, didn't follow what somebody wanted me to do. I was always very, like... Submissive. Yes. Okay. But I would be a little too invasive. Like, I didn't respect, like, their space sometimes. Like I said, like, I used to be a very codependent person, so codependency, like, one of their traits is like upset being obsessive like with the partner's behavior and like um so that's overthinking a, got it so that's a boundary that you will respect then in, in a relationship no i what i like i respected everything that they wanted like anything they asked me to do i would do it but a lot of the times also the clinginess yes yeah. i was like yeah so, okay. um, so you don't really so what the question is what's like what's one of them that you didn't want to follow a boundary that you didn't want to follow, but you oh. still did. You kind of followed them all. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. And um, what about yourself, Hennessy? Mm. I want to say um, two things. First is one um, that Vicky had mentioned. Um, yeah. The whole 
boundary it's basically like a boundary thing um when somebody would like um ask for space and you're just like kind of confused because you don't know if it is your fault or whatever but it's just like a boundary thing like you have to respect somebody's space when they ask for it and it's not like i don't i'm just saying like yeah. it was very a little new to me because like i kind of like was like what did i do like oh my god like did i do something or mm-hmm. for example like um somebody that i used to talk to like they would get angry and when they're like really really angry they don't want to be touched you know like and it's just like i need to just leave them alone because i don't really know what to do but i just wanted to oh, be there like more, like, mm-hmm. respect a personal yeah, boundary exactly okay. like a, I, I think i get what you're saying i guess we could take that for an answer but i think what um ice underscore five I had another answer is yeah looking for is yeah okay what's your other answer my other answer was um i'm following people that you used to um be in a relationship with or used to talk to oh okay what? but you do follow that boundary i do yes that's a good one yes okay i feel like it's i feel like it's very respectful when you yeah. don't do that because you know like like i don't know for me i just don't I don't feel the need to want to follow somebody with that I used to be in a relationship when I'm in a new, when I'm in a relationship. Okay. All right. Cool. Cool. Um, yo, ice, ice underscore five thirteen said lie sexual. <laughs> he was saying that you not bisexual. He said you lie sexual. Like girl, you lying. <laughs> you definitely like niggas. <laughs> Mm-mm. that's what the chat's saying but uh hey uh yo thanks for the support um man keep sending in the super chats anyone else have any questions send in the super chat we'll ask okay we just got one in let's see uh mr brick 68 he says uh he sends in five dollars thanks for the super chat he says my cuz has a married female bestie that calls him her bro Cuz told me that he's been smashing her whenever he wants. Ten years. Damn. Dane. Uh, Cuz hangs with hubby. Okay. Wait, Dane. what? So pretty much he's saying that, uh, so his cuz is married mm-hmm. to a female with a bestie. And the bestie calls him her bro. Mm-hmm. Cuz said that uh, he's been smashing her whenever he wants for ten years. The bestie. Yeah. Of well, his wife. No, he's not smashing the bestie. Yeah. I think he means that she's been smashing. The she's been smashing a hubby for 10 years. Yeah, the best friend is smashing. The, hubby. the best friend is smashing a wife. That's what he's saying. His best friend. The man's best friend? His cousin is... is So his cuz is married to a female. Uh, wait, let me see. My cuz yeah, has I'm a, little a married confused. female. My cuz has a married female. Okay, so he's married to a female, and then he calls. Okay, I, what do you mean on that? Uh, yeah, I'm like confused. a dollar super chat. Who's smashing who, bro? Is the <laughs> make it more? <laughs> make it make yeah. sense a little bit. Is your cousin smashing another dude? Then that's a little weird. Or is your cousin's wife smashing the best friend? Smashing her bestie. I think that's what you mean, but give some clarification. Smashing her best friend? Smash, yeah. His the, male cousin is smashing a married woman, he said. Yes. So the, who's... But, oh, that's what he said? The male's friend is smashed. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So uh, the cousin is smashing a married woman, and the cousin is the best friend, right? Right. Oh, makes but, sense. Wait, All right. what? I still don't get it. Yeah, me neither. I'm a little lost. So, I'm not even going to lie to you. Go ahead, East. He said um, <laughs> male cousin is smashing his female best friend that is married to a, to a guy um and uh, but the guy that so the guy that she's married to is his best friend his, yes okay so he's trash okay yeah yeah oh yeah man hey pretty can't, much that's, can't that's trust it that, oh. i mean they all i mean they both are then because like why if that's supposed to be your man's why you she wants to have her cake and eat it too well well no no he's saying that the dude the dude was smashing a married woman but the dude and the person the guy they're not friends oh that's what i thought you were saying no well not. i mean that's i mean that's he's saying that the dude the his cousin who's smashing that married woman mm-hmm. he's the married woman's best friend uh, the cousin is the married woman's best friend that's what he's saying so pretty much okay. he's not no i mean a man can't be a whore 
and that's why men woman. that's why men don't want uh, that's have a why male men don't want their woman to have besties yeah i don't play that like at all that is married yeah Yeah, I don't play that sis shit. I don't play that bro stuff. No way. He's best friends with a woman who's married, but he's not friends with the husband. He's just friends with the uh, with the woman that's married. Yeah, he's just friends with the woman. Yeah, that's the bestie. Right, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Facts. Right, so I said it right. right. Okay. For him, it wouldn't matter because he's a man, right? Because I mean, what does he care? Well, he's not really. Well, well, it does two things. Uh, I guess we could talk about this a little bit. So, when a guy is smashing a girl that's married <laughs> the guy that's smashing that girl that's married he gonna have a little bit trust issues is the like, oh, trust like it, issues, affects him. It, it affects the man yeah. when he does it too that's why when you do any immoral things it's in the bible they'll sh thy, thy shall not commit adultery you know sleep with a married man mm -hmm. asleep uh, uh sleep with a married woman or the married woman sleep with another man step outside of the relationship right because it, it does hurt both parties mm -hmm. so the man if he does that he gonna be like dane guess when he marries a chick he gonna be a little bit more like well if i i was just clapping his cheeks and she was on the phone lying to her dude saying like oh yeah i'll be home soon i'm just hanging out with my girls but really i'm 10 e 10 inches deep inside her guts smacking it and flipping it around he's gonna be like dang like how can she just lie to her husband like this it's so deaf do his part but i'm in here swimming in it so well he's doing that yeah. to himself <laughs> well yeah you could say he's doing it to himself too because he's he's smashing a married woman mm -hmm. but on that's on the guys and the trust issues he would have some trust issues from that and to a low degree not to a high degree but it would make him look at women with a different eye for especially sure. since she's married yeah because anytime you do any any type of immoral act it affects the man and a woman mm -hmm. but uh it affects the woman a whole lot more so here's what the woman does right so one the woman if she's married to a man till death death do his part but she's sleeping and she's cheating with another man. Well, one, she really doesn't like her guy like that. She's already, she been lost emotions for her guy. Mm -hmm. Like she, she mentally been going throughout the relationship probably like six months ago yeah. and longer. she, or even longer, you know what I'm saying? So one, she really don't like her guy like that. And two, she's submitting to another man. So a woman can only serve one master. I know that sounds horrible sometimes when I say it, but you can only submit to one man mm -hmm. because sex is the most ultimate form of submission. So that's why, like, y'all yeah, ladies could vouch for me. And when you're having sex with one guy, I know you with girls, but when you was taking D, um, <laughs> I know you definitely took some before. Uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm vulgar with it. But when y'all was sleeping with one man and that man checked off, you know your boxes to a certain extent and you liked them you wasn't quick to be hopping on another dick were you no 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 right and but the only time you would be sleeping with a man and then you are looking for something else is usually when you've already like you got a, a foot out the door you already don't like the current guy that you're talking to you're not a really emotionally involved with him anymore so you're looking for something else but there's never a time the point that i'm making is and woman y'all could let, correct me if i'm wrong but i'm thinking i'm 100 right there's never a time in a woman's life when she's 100 percent invested in a man emotionally physically spiritually everything invested in a man loves a man admires and respects a man and then still let and still submits to another man it's impossible for for her to do that right. mm -hmm. so uh, that's why i say a woman can only serve one master because right. when she's really serving her man she loves respects and admires him the other guys are invisible mm -hmm. right exactly but when she doesn't really love it respects and admires the man other guys become visible and <laughs> she started looking for other options mm -hmm. and as a man is different though the man master is God. We serve God. That's our ma that's our master. So and because we don't submit to women, mm -hmm. you get what I'm saying. So it's like for a man, we could truly love our girl, truly love her, but we could clap some other tail. I'm not saying that it's right. I'm not saying that's that, not of God. Yeah, it's not of God. I'm not saying that it's right. But all I'm saying that we're capable of truly loving an individual. 
and truly having sex with another woman. The reason why is because for a man to have sex is not a submissive act. We mm -hmm. don't submit to the other woman. The reason why a woman is incapable of doing that type of act, of truly love, respect, and admiring a man, and then submitting to another man, because she can't serve two masters. Mm -hmm. Got it? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. I break that down good. Trish, what you got on that? You look like you disagree. I, I don't dis I don't necessarily <laughs> disagree with that statement. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, I like listening to what you have to say. It's always very interesting. Your <laughs> okay, cool, cool. But it makes sense. Yeah, okay. it makes it, it makes, makes a lot of sense. Makes some sense. Um, other than that, chat. Uh, yo, where we at right now? We live right now. Oh, we got some super chats coming in. Okay, let's get to it. Hey, we got. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Wicked Assassin sent in a dollar. Hey, thanks, man. I told you, even if it's a dollar, I'm going to shout you out. Appreciate that dollar, uh, Wicked Assassin. Um, we also have, okay, uh, Mr. Brick68, he sent in $2. He, he said, cousin smashing female best friend for 10 years. Okay, cousin smashing the female best friend. Okay, makes sense. All right, got you, bro. Uh, oh, we got a baller alert. He sends in twenty dollars. Oh, also, um, Ray, uh, <laughs> Ray, president, you sent in twenty dollars too. That's another baller alert. Um, baller alert from uh, Jose Gonzalez. He says, "L to both." But the <laughs> married woman is gonna burn in hell. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Question. Would any of the ladies be with a married man if he's taking care of you in every way, money, sexually, and anything, and everything else? I wouldn't even give him a chance. Nope. Okay, nope. Trish? I would. Oh, Trish. I need to know <laughs> your her perspective. I need to. I need to. I need to. Hey, listen, chat. Trish is spicy. She's 50 years old. She like, what? I'll take whatever I can get right now. He well, married. No, I'm fine with Trish. Go ahead. If they were married, but they were really wealthy and they could physically take care of all my needs and just do everything I need. And then, you know, I, I, I would, I mean, may, maybe. I what about if you were younger, like 25? Would you still do it? Probably not. All right. then. Okay. Fair enough. So if you were younger, you wouldn't do it. But now in your life, you would, uh. You I wouldn't would, say no. But 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 what if you had to keep it a full secret on your end? Like you couldn't tell the you the mistress. Mm -hmm. And you couldn't tell the main girl. You gonna be cool with that? Yeah. As long as he doing what he gotta do for you. If if I'm if, if financially and, and you're happy. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm happy and yeah. Okay. I respect yeah. it, yeah. Trish out the bag with it. She like, <laughs> yeah, my uh my my uh I, I'm 50 years on this planet. This thing about to be a desert soon if it already <laughs> ends it. So I gotta uh let her brother slide when he slides. <laughs> I just like I don't know like when you get older like you don't know everybody's interpersonal relationships when they've been married for yeah. many years and then sometimes women that they're married to just don't want to have an intimate relationship anymore. And that one part is missing out of a relationship, then you know it, it. So he's going to get it from you. Yeah. But he's holding you down in in the, in the ways that you want to be held down. So you're gonna hold him down in the ways that he want to be held down. Yeah. Yo, Trish with the biz. Hey, uh, what? sliding her DMs, one of y'all. No, <laughs> <laughs> hilarious. Uh, so let's get to some. I ain't even asked no questions, and actually, I don't want to ask any questions uh, on this on this panel today. Let's just do the girls. Um, Vicky, you got another question? Yeah. What you got? Um, let me see. Should you disclose your mental health issues to a partner early in the relationship? Yes. Ooh, okay. So sh should you disclose inspiration. your mental health issues? Let's get to that question in a second. Hey. Everybody on Facebook right now. We live on Facebook. I'm about to end that chat. We got 100 people on Facebook. Go over to YouTube. I'm shutting down the Facebook chat now. YouTube is going to still remain up, but Facebook, we're shutting it down. Um, no Fugazi podcast on Facebook. That's no Fugazi podcast on Facebook. Go there now. We end in the live stream. Okay, so we uh we off of Facebook. We only live on YouTube right now. Uh so 
let's go with Hennessy with this first one. Um, ask the question again. I'm sorry, Vicky. Um, I said, should you just should you disclose your mental health issues to a partner early in the relationship? Hennessy. I'm gonna say yes. Yes. Um, uh, Hennessy, should yes. you disclose your body count in a relationship in the beginning of the relationship? Yes. You should. Yes, oh, in the beginning. Ooh, okay. I mean, if it's not, I mean, it's not like what day one or mm -hmm. day two. Like, if it's been a week or two, that's. I feel like that's still that's early. So, yeah. You should, you should disclose it. Yes. Hey, okay, I like. We. I think we red pilled her. Hey, <laughs> chat. Yo, chat. We really red pill Hennessy today. She's saying like, yes, chicks should be disclosing their body count in a relationship, and it kind of correlates, right? Because if you have any emotional issues, exactly, mm -hmm. depending on your body count, usually is gonna depend on how many emotional issues you got mm -hmm. from all that baggage and being dominated by all those men. Um, fair enough. Thank you for the answer. Well, did you want to elaborate a little bit more? Um, I'm just saying yes because um, you you don't always want to. Another thing I also learned too is like you don't also you don't always want to give away too much of yourself too early to somebody that you don't know is gonna be serious with if that makes sense I like don't. something um, as personal as what mental yeah like anything yeah like any anything mental. personally mentally that you're that you're going to that you're going through I feel like it's very personal and I feel like you should trust Just them a little it. more. Of that person with that information when you decide to but if talk to them about to it serious, that's when i feel like it's time to talk about what it is that's been going through my mind what i've been through what i what i have like whether it's depression etc stuff like that yeah that's when i feel like if you like i said if you trust them enough to be ready to talk about it that's when you give them that information got you hey chat let's get the likes up we got uh on youtube right now we got over 100 people in the in the youtube channel but we only got 51 likes hey get the likes up everyone that's watching right now like and if you're not subscribed subscribe to the youtube channel because if you like this content anytime you like and subscribe it pushes it in the algorithm so that means more people will be able to see this type of content so if you like it you'll help other people to see it and, and they can like it Pretty much what I'm saying. Uh, thank you for elaborating mm -hmm. on that. And Vicky, you can answer it yourself, and then we'll go to Trish. Um, I mean, like, I wouldn't probably, like, not, not on the first date, but I, I mean, me personally, like, I'm, like, an open book. Like, I'd rather know what you're going through so that I know how to deal with it because if you got too much stuff that, like, like, say if, um, like, as of now, like, you know, I'm changing my life. Like I gave myself to God and stuff. So if are, um, Vicky, are you what? Are you a born again virgin? Not a virgin. Are you a born again virgin? No. no? Are you not well, like I mean, one of yeah. these? Oh yeah, celibate. Yeah. You celibate, but you're not a born again. Oh, God, it's a joke because these don't get girls it. be saying that there. It's okay. You don't reborn get born again. Yeah, girls be like, oh, I'm born again virgin. You're spiritually, you know, spiritually, spiritually reborn. reborn. No girl, you done slept with fifty guys in your past. You still got fifty now. You're not born again virgin. No, oh, I'm sorry. Go but ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, spiritually <laughs> reborn. Um, <laughs> but like, I'm just like at a different. You know, I'm I'm more of a healed version of myself. So now, if I was to date again. I'm going to need to know if you do have any issues because there's certain things that like I'm just really not trying to go through ever again. And I get it like people have like, you know, like I can understand like little things, but there's certain things that I'm not going to deal with. So I need us to be like on the same level. You know okay. what I mean? So I would rather, yeah, somebody be honest. Be honest. About themselves. Be upfront. And, and OK. And would you? You would be honest and upfront with your emotional Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. What about you, Trish? I, I would, because you know something? It's just a part of who I am, and if you don't like that whole person, then you don't belong with me. Got it. Um, okay, good question, Vicky. Um, I know you had another question, right? Or no? Mm. Is that what you had? Um, let me see if I... Because I had one on the top of my head, actually. Oh, yeah, you did, but you said you forgot it. You, If you yeah. know it, you can you could say it. Um... Can't really. Um, I was gonna actually let me let me try and rephrase. So, yeah, I'm gonna go back to the question that she just asked. So when you say, 
mentally when somebody's going through stuff if they should disclose it or not um what do you mean specifically by that like if somebody is emotionally unavailable or if they have something personal going on that they don't want to share with yet should they share it with you right away well like okay so for me like if you're dealing with stuff mm -hmm. and like sometimes like you know like people okay if you're suffering from depression i know what that's like because I, I went through it mm -hmm. so i understand it but it's just like not something that i would really feel like dealing with at this point in time in my life but because i feel like if you're going through that then sometimes you're not gonna um like stuff like that i feel like um because it can cause like well i don't want to say it causes problems in a relationship yeah, it could cause some problems i know what you're saying and and not only because that like, nothing against that person like you know what i'm saying like in a bad way but it's just like i feel like yeah at the end of the day to keep it no fugazi uh you know um no one's gonna everyone's gonna put their best foot forward mm -hmm. in a courting process so you're not gonna know if they mm -hmm. have any emotional baggage what, what was the term you use emotional what I, I just said mental health issues Mission? but that could be okay, anything so yeah. really mm -hmm. no one is they're going to try to hide their mental health issues um and then you got to think about it mental health mental health issue is a very broad term right because then what is it medically diagnosed like do you have adhd yeah, like, do you have, like, are you bipolar like people could just be like well i don't know but maybe it would be more emotional like um because like, people just be crazy sometimes yeah, so I like would they say split, that i don't even know how to split really personality it. so i mean if it's not medically diagnosed for a woman uh the mental issues that she that would that she would have it would all come from her sexual past so if she has a higher body count the probability is just higher for her to have more emotional distress you know what i mean to have more mental health issues because right. think about it she had to like each guy to a degree she, she they hit they dominated her and then she left that partner or something happened maybe he just left he hit it and quit it then she got with another it kept happening all the time she's a broken individual so yeah i would say that uh to answer the question myself i would say yes someone should um you know disclose any mental health issues but would they no because woman is never going to tell their body count especially on the first day mm -hmm. i don't Hennessy says she would. Kudos to you. That could be a little fugazi, but it may not. She could actually be no fugazi because we don't know Hennessy. It's her first time on a podcast. <clears throat> but um, she could be an exception to the rule. But generally speaking, most women, they aren't going to disclose their body count. You know what I mean? You're not disclosing how many niggas done wax that tail. Hennessy, you may disclose how many females because you know that men really don't care about it. Yep. And you know that it's not... It's not that uh, filthy, right? Mm -hmm. It isn't. Mm -hmm. Truth no. be told, it isn't. When a girl on girl action, it isn't as filthy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guy on girl, uh, he, yeah, it's much filthy. We know how it is. But um, yeah, I would say keep it no fugazi. You know, people aren't going to be, you know, disclosing that. They're going to put their best foot forward, and you're going to have to use your social skills um, to see to pick up on yeah, it to see if they're crazy or mm -hmm. not to figure that out um but and some yeah. people aren't honest about who they really are like yeah. sometimes like yeah. what they're what who they really are like you just eventually you just see that for yourself like um some people can be aware and i'm actually very proud of them so people who who have actually put their best foot forward and have changed themselves like mm -hmm. people that used to be a narcissist can actually change i really believe that and i feel like if you're aware of it and you then mention that to the person that you are starting to get very serious with um that's when you can be able to basically see who they really are but some people don't aren't aware that they're manipulators and they're narcissists yeah. so mm -hmm. eventually you end up seeing that you know how you talked about what you went through you eventually you saw that yeah but he wasn't even aware of it you just had to see it for yourself exactly who he is yeah because yeah. he played it he played it really good exactly in the yeah. yeah most people don't change uh you it is true people can change from being a bad person and then they change of course people can change it's hard though but do they change the probability is no but like you know how you were saying like um like you guys broke up or went on a break because y'all needed to heal right so that's what i mean like like if you know not saying like you guys did like right. not for your like 
situation but like mm -hmm. if you know that you're dealing with stuff right and like you're basically entering a, a relationship so that you can escape right. certain things that mm -hmm. you should be facing you're filling the void with yeah. somebody else and i feel like that should be something that you shouldn't even really be dating for right. real if you yeah. if mm -hmm. you know if you're not emotionally available why are you right if you have a lot yeah. of past trauma exactly like, mm -hmm. don't put that on the but person that assault, exactly you know, your dad, you know stuff like that you should not you're clearly not ready to be in a relationship. right and i feel like that is considered like mental health issues because it's in your you know what i'm saying right. like you're yeah yeah enough for the mental health stuff i mean uh yeah, let's move it right along and get into some more touchy. Hey, uh, chat, man, if y'all got some questions, send us some questions, man, because I'm letting the girls, that's why y'all getting this type of podcast. You're going to get more of the emotional <laughs> stuff because I'm letting the girls ask the questions. If y'all want to ask some questions, send in the super chat. But I am going to ask one question. So uh, <laughs> question starting uh, over here. We're just going to go down the line. Um, would you agree? No, so would you agree? that sex is something that's shared between two people. Yes or no? Yes. Vicky? Yes. Trish? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So um, if that's, since that's the case, then why do men have to pay a higher price for something that's shared? Starting with Hennessy. So you believe that sex is something that's shared between two people. Why do men have to pay a higher price for something that's shared because um how do i explain it i know exactly what i want to say um i feel like men like the chase at the end of the day so the harder you try to play to get the more they're gonna want you some men are like that and i feel like it also lets a man know how much a woman respects her body because she's not going to give it up so easily. And when she's emotionally more invested in you and connected to you, that's when it's even more important to her and she is going to want to give it to you. Okay. If so that makes sense. Okay. So you're saying that um, men like the chase. So that's why women, that's why men have to pay a higher price for, for the sex. That and it, lets the man know how much she respects herself by not giving it up so easily and it lets the man know that that's how much she well i that's your perspective my perspective on that uh i mean a man can have sex with a girl and the first night a one night stand is not about that right how fast it is but it's how fast you add value outside of sex so if i hit something the first night a man smashes something the first night one night stand and then the girl just doesn't text or anything. It's kind of like whatever. And, you know, she leaves. Or if I hit something the first night and wake up and my house my house is clean and I got some breakfast cooked for me. And then, you know, mm -hmm. the next few days, you know, she keeping in touch. She's still yeah. showing interest. Right, that can right. still go on to, to yeah, a, good, of course. a good thing. Right. So we won't look at those type of women. So when women, my point is that when women add value outside of sex, the man doesn't look at her as... A slut. A slut. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if the woman has sex with a man and doesn't have add any value or, you know, he just hits it and she's just like, okay, doesn't even care. Like, okay, whatever. We know she's for the streets and she will always remain for the streets. So that's what I'll say on that. But the other part, I get what you're saying. You're talking about the chase. You, Vicky. Can you read the question again? Yeah. So remember, you you agreed that um, sex, <laughs> but sex uh, is a shared thing between two people. Right. Right. So since sex is a shared thing between two people, why do men have to pay a higher price for something that's shared? Meaning, like, why do they have to work harder for it? Yeah, it could be work harder, however you perceive that question. Um, I mean, I really don't know. Yeah, I don't know how to answer that question. Like, I mean, okay. it's something that should, like, me personally, like, I mean, yeah, like, I have to have an emotional connection with somebody. Like, I can't, mm -hmm. I can't just be, like, whatever. Um, but. I think you just answered, you just actually answered it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you said that the reason why men have to pay a higher price, because women have to have a higher emotional investment. Connection to really. Emotional connection. 
on I you. I want you to define what the male's higher price means. So it's whatever you, however you perceive it. So she perceived it as the chase. She perceived it as um, emotions. Uh, the, Emotional. The, you know, she, since she has, since she needs to be more emotionally stimulated to have sex, then and the effects of that is that he has to invest more into her. So he's paying that higher price. So that's what she's saying. Well, think though is if you're a male and you're coming out as a person that's going to be more dominating and, and characteristic yeah you kind of have to prove that dominating feature by like <clears throat> working harder <throat> at showing your dominant alpha features Fact. i know what she means yeah, yeah i get exactly what you're saying so <laughs> you're saying that um you know since the man is you know dominant and a leader you know what i mean of course, then he has to then, how can a woman know that he's that yeah. dominant feature? He actually, he has to express that in some ways. Exactly. Makes sense because that's action. what the woman is looking for. Exactly. Correct. Okay, cool. All your answers is correct. Uh, okay. I was <laughs> yeah. going to say, what is it not shared or something? Because yeah, it, is. it is. So the, well, that's the thing. So women tend to view sex because sex is an equal value ex exchange. Mm -hmm. Sex is like a hug. You know what I'm saying? But women hold sex as a value loaded exchange instead of a value, a equal value exchange. So the man, and that's totally fine. That's just nature. You know what I mean? That's why only 40% of men procreated since the beginning of time, but 90% of women procreated. That's because women are hypergamous. They just have a natural propensity that's in them to want quality, the best man. Right. So the man has to become the best man for her. So that's why a man has to self-improve in a multitude of different ways to be able to make Hennessy feel the vibes, which I'm sure one of these niggas is going to rid you up. Hey, uh, she's saying she uh, lesbian now. One of y'all niggas in the chat sliding her DMs, raise her up a little bit. Let's see. Please don't. I swear to God, you're going to get blocked real quick. Hey, uh, put your put your shout out your Instagram. Throw it out there. Go ahead. Uh, Perks of a Daisy, two S's and two Y's. Spell it. P E R K S O F D A I S S Y Y. Listen, someone in the chat, raise her up, sweep up <laughs> off the feet. She don't, she dating, she was dating studs. She don't want them studs no more. She want a real man. So go ahead and slide in. No. Look, shoot, <laughs> listen, dog, shoot your shot. Kobe. Uh, moving right along. So, yeah, women tends to just hold sex as a value loaded exchange and that is totally okay and thank you uh i took that question from the it's complicated channel they always got some good questions so thanks for that question man um any other questions oh actually let me get to the super chat see what we got what we got in here okay uh no questions y'all all right man so um this one, one marcus henderson his question is, hold up hold up hold up marcus henderson i don't see a super chat he's sending cash oh no no, no he, yeah he ain't sending no cash we only doing people that send him sending cash and i can see it here on my phone oh, okay, okay, okay. um okay let me get to another question then we're gonna talk a little bit more about so i have one. Oh, you got one yeah is it spicy uh I don't know, but I feel like it's a good topic to talk about. All right. Is it emotional? <laughs> All right. Let's just let's see if it's good. If not, I just want to know everybody's pet peeves on relationships. Like, oh, red flag then. I wouldn't say a red. F I don't want to call it a red flag. I just feel like what are your number one pet peeves that you just can't stand um, when you are starting to talk to somebody, whether it's like you know they their teeth look weird or they smell or okay. like let's go they with chew Trish, weird. Trish. you have 50 years on this planet <laughs> but like the weird thing is and i don't know if it's just my age or what but the older i get the more successful i become the harder it is for me to find somebody to date mm -hmm. yeah because because your standards are higher because yeah the the people I would have smashed like when my twenties and thirties I'm oh, not smashing dude. now mm -hmm. I'm not Trish talking okay. Trish. You know what I mean? I, they they just don't hold any value to me at this point in my life so I mean it sounds horrible I feel bad because they're nice people listen don't feel bad Trish it's, it's, it is what it is this this is how God this is how God made you you know yes, what I mean yes. this is the woman's nature this is it's a double edged sword. You want to become successful so you don't have to worry about a man. Mm -hmm. But the 
other edge of the sword is when you become successful, Are you too successful then you're too to, successful to for most with, men to be with a man. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? It's so, true. I have a friend. I'm not, he's going to remain nameless, but he's a good friend of mine. And we can talk about that another time. But basically, <laughs> um, he's always said that if he had two women that were equally hot, equally funny, equally everything, except for one of them was successful and the other one was not, he would go with the one that is not successful every single time because she would be more attentive to his needs yeah. that mm. that is a fact that is, very that is a fact trish and uh yeah i mean you're living proof and um i want women and actually uh all women i mean you're the youngest on the panel but if women could actually learn from what you just said right yeah because there's a lot of women right now that they're prioritizing the wrong things in life mm -hmm. right let me ask you a question, Trish. You're 50 years old. You've been on this planet for a while. And you're a nurse practitioner and you do Botox and stuff like that, right? Where do you derive your true happiness from? Do I love so working. I love it. Okay. So l I let me... I love it. Let me I love my dogs and I love my, my son. Okay. Got it. So let me ask the question uh, and you let me know which one would you choose, right? Mm -hmm. Because I know that you were married before and now you have twice, ha twice and, and you have a son. Yeah. And so you already you did the family thing. And, and now a married man wouldn't bother me to the same degree because I don't like I think women when they're at that child rearing age, they should not date a married man because they want to procreate and they want that family. But at my age, you know, you already procreated. The, so, yeah. So like, let me ask you a question. Right. This is just a. Uh, it's a what if, mm -hmm. right? So you choose A or choose B, mm -hmm. right? So you have a, you're 50 years old, you married to the man of your dreams, tall, however your man is tall, financially good, you know, you don't have to work if you don't want, working isn't mandatory, but you could go out there and still do whatever you want as far as chasing a, a dream that you want or a hobby that you like to do. Mm -hmm. um, you could start a fundraiser, Life is good. He has you financially, but whatever you want to do, he's okay with it, right? Mm -hmm. And you have a family with him. You got kids. Life is great there. Or would you choose the single lifestyle, 50 years old, still single? You got your dogs. You love your dogs. You got your house. You got your one son. Which would you choose in this what-if scenario? Would you choose A, the the I, man of your dreams, the family, the everything, or and but but you don't have to because to make money you have to sacrifice your time yeah. you don't have to sacrifice your time to make money it's not mandatory can i say this one thing i believe that the men choices i had in my 20s were not quality choices and i believe if i had a quality man in my 20s that gave me that life experience i wouldn't be so driven to the point where i am right that now. you want to work right bingo 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 that women that's listening to this all around the world you could learn from trish mistakes not even mistakes but life right she says she's happy and she's fine living with her dog and she got her son she had two uh she had two marriages but ended in the divorce and she's still and she's she just admitted that you know She's not going to settle for a guy still because most guys don't meet her standards. She's out there getting to the bag, right? But she admitted that she still would prefer, you know, prefer that that guy that met her standards when she was young so she could build a family with. So this says something to women, right? Women take this from it. You're prioritize what you prior what you prioritize. You have all the sex hot, you have all the you have high sexual value in your younger years when you're between 18 to 25 you have the highest sexual value meaning that that's when you have the opportunity to attract the most higher tier men that you can trish on the other hand she just said that she ain't come in contact with those guys fair enough right but women you do have that you do have that uh i mean you have that choice of doing that so take it's a recommendation what she's giving y'all is pretty much at your younger years, try to lock down the most highest tier men that you can, that you want to be in a relationship and have a create a family and children with. Uh, and men take something away from it.
get your stuff in order. Y'all slacking right now. You get, you know what I'm saying? So men, what you can take from this, women do want a family and they do want to, but they want to have that family with a masculine male that can lead them. Most of you dudes smoking weed, living in your mom's basement, you have no ambitions to really do anything with your life. Stop that now. You get what I'm saying? Continue to watch this podcast though. Um, but after the podcast, Stop. get your life in order <laughs> <laughs> and, and really go make something of yourself because then you'll be able to lock down a, a, a girl of, of your preferences, but not only you'll be able to give that girl the world because women do want the world. You're hearing it right now from a 50 year old woman. She's telling you like, yeah, I wish I had the world, but it just didn't go like that. And that's totally fine because life isn't perfect. Um, but yeah, man, it's, Thank you for sharing that because I think the audience needs to hear that. Women need to know that they're they're at their peak value when they're young. For example, Hennessy, if you wanted to go back uh, to dicks. Um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Like... If you wanted to go back to a man, you're 26, right? Yes. I mean, your value is high right now at 26. Say if, say if, all right, put it like this. Say you're 35, and now you're like, man, I don't like these studs no more. But your value is going to be lower at 35, so now you're not going to be able to lock down those high-status dudes at 35. You know what I'm saying? you at your peak value now to lock those high-status dudes. So that's the example that I want to use. But anyways, uh, yeah, man. Chat, what y'all saying? In, what what they saying in the chat, man? They got any questions? I do not see it. Uh... Oh, I see Michael Brown sent in $2. Hey, man, I appreciate the support. Thank you for that. Uh, Marcus Henderson yeah. sent in $2. Hey, man, appreciate that support as well, bro. Uh, what else we got in here? Okay, that's not much. So l let's get into... Uh, wait, did everyone answer that question or no? What was the question? I keep the last, oh, yeah, everyone did already answer that question. Okay, we good. Um, Ease, you got any questions or are you good? I'm good for now. But I did have a question. It was about the uh, Instagram thing. So I realized a lot of women... Put the, put the camera on the girls, too. What are you talking? So I realized a lot of women, you know, have a problem with their guys on Instagram liking, commenting, pictures. So if you did have access to your man's cell phone, mm -hmm. what would be... What would you... What's one thing that, that, would, that would be upsetting to you if he saw... If you... What would you see him do on Instagram that'd be like, I, right, I'm not doing, I'm not dealing with you anymore. Like, <laughs> over. Like, if, what if, like, is it liking a picture, comment on a picture? Um, like, what is it on social media that you don't want to see your man doing at all? That's okay. Be, like, good question. It's over. Let's start with Hennessy. Um, commenting under females' pages that are trying to get their attention towards flirting if it's about their outfit because your man is into fashion that i'm okay with it because it's I, I trust it and i trust the comment and um him giving other women attention when all his attention should yo, be only I on got me some. what about yo uh instagram low-key when they started the stories and you could like stories because remember you couldn't like stories before yeah but when they started to like stories that's when everything got hit and niggas ain't even like pictures no more they're like man let me go to all the stories and like them because yeah. can't nobody see but that person so what if if what if he's liking pictures or and commenting on pictures under like those instagram baddies like the one with the 100k and up followers or a million followers you know girls that he's never gonna meet or ever see like would you be upset if he commented or like on those girls with the blue check marks that are you know that on the like that you know it's out of his league anyway yeah out of his league anyway girls that he's never gonna have a chance with girls that don't even know he existed would you be mad about that yes or no i would question it in my mind i wouldn't question him but it wouldn't it wouldn't really bother me honestly because and i'm not talking about he's saying anything crazy it's like oh you love if girls, he's not right? giving them okay if he's trying to talk to them and dm them that's completely different but if he's just liking the picture and commenting on the picture no commenting no commenting no but liking the picture yes is yeah cool i don't care okay i'll just interrupt real quick any dudes that's gonna be commenting under any chick picture low value behavior don't do it don't ever comment under a chick's picture um it's it's no reason to it's like commenting and saying like you beautiful or something like that that's very low value men behavior um 
also, uh, a man should never be even following and well, liking, or well, let's just stick with the commenting. Commenting, especially if you're gonna comment on a chick picture, let it be obtainable. Let that chick be obtainable. But if you commented on a picture where she's like a model, she got a million followers, you know that she's not even gonna look at you at all. That's that's actually more low value than commenting on a regular girl's picture. Because the reason why it's like, you know you got no chance, but you're still going to comment. That's like pathetic almost. At least if you're going to comment, comment on a chick where you may have a chance. But I recommend that you don't comment at all. Slide in a DM, dog. Pull up. Kobe, stop being scared. But go ahead, Vicky. You're next. <laughs> um, I mean, now that I'm in a different walk of life, to me, it's like lusting over someone. So... I mean, I really don't care, like, if you're liking someone's picture, like, if you think they're, like, for if you if you have no intention behind it. Yeah. Like, but if you're, I don't... Trying like, to get their attention? Yeah, like, commenting, DMing, like, that would piss me off. Um, but like I said, like, it's just like, because you're, like, you're lusting over someone else, you're looking at them, you're like, damn, they look good, like comment dm you know what i mean so i would i would be pissed if they were dm dming and comment dm and comment what about you trish when i was younger i would have really cared a lot but now i'm just like you know what i don't really care yeah trish don't care about that <laughs> she'll take a married man right down you mm. can comment i'm telling you slide in her dms bruh <laughs> oh, oh my i know i got some older dudes right now in this chat Hey, slide in Trish DM. She with it. She with it all. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, I'm playing. Uh, I got a question uh, for the panel. Let's see here. First, let me check the uh, chat, see if anyone sent in any super chats. Let's see. No. Okay, no more super chats. Let me see. Let me get to my question. And then we're going to wrap it up. We're going to do one more question. Then we're going to do last thoughts because we've been rocking for like two hours now, I believe. Yeah. So let's see here. Uh, and y'all don't have any other questions, right, ladies? I have some. Oh, you did have some? Mm -hmm. Are they spicy enough? I don't know. It's late. <laughs> you got the, you be having like those. Would you hear if you... I mean, I got two good ones like, okay, that I think you it. might like, maybe. Okay, let's do so, one of the good ones. All right, so I have, is it possible to be friends with an ex? Or the other one is, what are your thoughts on dating a friend's ex off limits, or do you need permission? The second question. Let's do the mm -hmm. second question. Okay. Starting with Trish. Trish, what are your thoughts on dating a friend's ex? So I try not to do that. Try not to. Now, you've been on this planet for 50 years. Have you ever done it? I think I have. Oh, spicy. Did that uh, relation, you Normally and your friend, before, like, did that relationship I, end? I did actually start dating one of my friend's exes, I would probably call my friend and be like, hey, really sorry about this, but I have like, been having these things with this other guy. Oh, okay. I would tell her, and if she's like, don't do it, then I would, you know, I would think about that. You would think about it. Usually you still did it, though. Yeah, probably. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> hey, Trish is okay. And uh Vicky, answer your own question. <laughs> um I mean, you don't know, like cause like I mean maybe I personally wouldn't do it, but like what if they actually have a genuine connection? You know what I mean? So it's like like what if they were meant to be or something? Like don't stand in their way. <laughs> I don't know. I mean I wouldn't. Like, I don't look like his face. Yeah, Vicky. I'm just saying, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I personally wouldn't, but I'm just saying, you never know. Like, other people might have, like, a genuine connection, I guess. Okay. Hennessy. Or ask for permission, or I guess. Permission. Yeah. I need, you to, what about you? I need you to ask the question one more time. It says, what are your thoughts on dating a friend's ex? Off limits, or do you need permission? A friend. Now, now, so you bisexual. So let's do girls. Like a, like you dating another girl or another, then do the guy. Or would it be the same answer? Um, friend's ex. Because think about it. If you dating a dude, that dude piping you down, and then his friend <laughs> Tyrone, you about to be piped down by Tyrone. But if you dating a chick, you dating Kimberly, and y'all just cool. Y'all scissoring, and then you're going to date Lauren, and y'all just going to scissor too. 
So honest, it is a little difference, right? Honest, no. no. <laughs> okay. The same. Because it's a difference. <laughs> but go ahead, answer. Um, I kind of I like Vicky's answer because like I feel like at the end of the day, you don't want to stop two people's true happiness, but also I think that it's more respectful to make sure that it's okay with um the friend. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's respectful. I think um it holds more value to um how much um you mean to them and if they still aren't they're not comfortable with it they wouldn't appreciate it then i feel like that's your role as a friend to have no choice but to respect it and, and not hop on yeah to talking to that person and um i just feel like like i said it's just it's just a respect thing like okay. and if they're friends they're cool and they don't they don't care it doesn't bother them and you know for sure that it doesn't bother them that's when it's like you know you got the green light basically mm -hmm. okay okay that's when you got the green light uh yeah my thoughts on it nah bro that's low that's that's as a man i've never had i don't even hang around guys that would do that so if there's a guy that would sleep with or try to date my ex yeah bro He's he's not your friend. What so, a, so okay, as a guy, that's just a no no. Um, for a woman, it's still a no no because the dude he you and nine out of it's a ninety nine percent chance that if you do smash your friend's ex, um, and you're a girl, he ain't gonna wife you up anyway because it's like, like why would he wife you up? <laughs> So, yeah, that's what I would say. But what you had? I was going to say, what about if it's, oh, I feel like this is kind of difficult. Like, what do you, what what would you consider an actual ex? Like, what if it was somebody in high school that you used to talk to that you just lost contact? It's been years, but you and your bro are still good friends. And he told you, like, listen, um, I know you used to talk to her, but I kind of have a crush on her type yeah, stuff. Yeah, nah, I would. It's still a no. I personally, one, wouldn't recommend that to anyone. And I wouldn't do it at all because one, that's my friend. My friend, she submitted to that other dude. And that's my friend now. I got to look at, if I'm going to take this woman seriously, that means I got to see someone every day or whenever I chill with my boy, someone that dominated my girl. Mm. That's silly. I would never date a chick that smashed a homie. The girls that smashed a homie, they're for the streets and will always remain for the streets. So this is what girls don't really know. Girls, like, it's something in a male when we know the dude or, or oh, even that shit no ruins your dude. ego. <laughs> it, it doesn't ruin. It's not an ego. It, we feel disgusted by it. It's like, ugh. Like you only qualify for hard D. Nothing else. No debt. This D ain't for dedication. This D is for destroy. <laughs> Cause that's about it. That's only the only thing that's gonna happen. We're not gonna take you seriously. Now there are some beta type, feminine type dudes that's a little weird and they don't have a lot of options so they'll take whatever they could get because they don't got a lot of options but normally men with options like why would i talk to my friend's ex when i got options mm -hmm. that's silly but the girl it's even crazier when girls talk to their friend's ex because normally girls have tons of options mm -hmm. so then when they talk to their friend's ex it's like that really ain't your friend it's like, ugh. Like you, you could have talked to any other dude. You got all your DMs is full, but you chose to talk to your ex's friend. That's crazy. Yeah, that's true. I'd be mad. That's crazy. Like you got mad. Kinda. I as a dude, yeah. It's I mean, as a dude, it's it's crazy too. But the dude wouldn't even wife that chick up. Like if he does hit it, that's poor behavior on his part. But um, he would usually he never wifes that chick up. But yeah, that's what I was saying. Good question. Um. Any other spicy questions like that, or that's all you had? That's all I had. That's all you had? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Hennessy, you don't got nothing? You want to have some deeper conversations on some other stuff, or y'all want to wrap this up? Mm, it don't matter, man. We can get deep now, because if it was all surface-level stuff, we can have some deep, right, thought-provoking deep. stuff. Okay. Well, <laughs> Hennessy has an interesting life, and you have an interesting life as well. <laughs> You chilling. I <laughs> really am. <laughs> Biggie, I, I, I have a lot of friends that are female that are also very like professional, like, and they have a really hard time finding men too. It's not just me. It's I have a I have a friend that's a lawyer, cool. and her husband passed, and she has a hard time finding very it. hard. Time. And, and how old is she? 
She's 60. 60, of course. She's out of her prime. She's going to have a hard time finding a man, and most men aren't going to meet her standards. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Do So do all of your friends, like, do you have these talks, like, because you know that most guys don't meet your standards, and you know the reason why they don't meet your standards, because you're of a higher level in financials and competence and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Does your other friends recognize that as well? They do. Like, as they make more, their options is less? Yeah. It's not just me. I have a lot of friends that are actually in the same boat. So it's happening now. It's literally happening now. Y'all actually, y'all thought I'd be capping when I'd be saying this. Y'all thought I'd be fugazi, but no, I'm no fugazi. It's literally happening now. And Trish is the prime example, and she has data based off her friends as well. It's happening now that... The more money a woman makes and becomes successful in a workforce, the more she loses options. The harder it is for her to gonna be able to find a man that she's truly attracted to. So women currently right now, if you're chasing a career, but you really want a family and a masculine male and you're 26 years old, you probably want to, you know, chase the man or the woman. Uh, no, that's what you, to say. <laughs> you probably want to, you know, you know, focus on what would truly bring you happiness and peace. And that's a family. And Trish even said she would derive her highest happiness from a masculine male in the in family. So, yeah, cool. Um, so I had a question for you. And we were talking about it before, Hennessy. Um, it was about the... <clears throat> so you said that... Okay. Let's break it down. Let's have this topic. It's going to be, you're going to like it though, but it's going to be a little touchy. Okay. So I said in the beginning, and let me know if you had a point of contention with it. So this was before I knew you was bisexual, right? And then I said, yeah, like, you know, when people indulge in those acts, it's, in, it's immoral. Like, I, I think it's immoral, right? And when I said that, um, what did you think when I said that? Was you just thinking like, this nigga crazy? <laughs> Keep it funky. <laughs> um, I was just, honestly, I was just respecting your point of view because everybody has their difference in opinions at the end of the day. So if that's okay. really how you feel, then that that's it. Okay, cool. So, no, that's 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 good. So that you know that I wasn't a attacking anything, you know, no. a point of view. Yeah. Now, the point of view that I said, do you agree with that or disagree with it? With the access? Or with the immoral, like the immoral act, meaning that uh, the sexual perversion, any sexual perversion or any sexual deviance outside of men and women is immoral. Do you think that's immoral or do immoral meaning wrong? Or do you think that is actually right? Because it's a sin in the Bible. So he's well, not even in the not even in the Bible, like how you feel internally, too. No, but I'm saying like. Oh, do you mean like does she feel? Yeah, immoral? yeah, yeah. I'm asking. Oh. I'm asking her. I feel like I need that question to be asked again. Okay, like, I got you. Where, like, the question that that drove to that answer? I need that question. Oh, the question that drove me. Yes, to exactly. I need I know, in I order for me to something. Yeah, I I need to in order to answer what you just told me. I need to know what was the question originally. Got you. For let's, you to... let's do it just in general then, right? Okay. So in general, uh. My point, right? Here's mm -hmm. my perspective. Any sexual deviance outside of men and women is immoral. Immoral meaning that it's wrong. Now, would you agree with that or would you disagree with that? I would agree with it. You would agree with it? Yes. That? Okay. So since internally you know it's like wrong, right? Mm -hmm. Why do you can why do you enact in it? And I know why. Why? Because you're attracted, of course, and it's your preferences, you know, women and stuff like that. But um and you have free will. That's another reason of why I'm probably answering it for you. <laughs> One, you're a free will individual, so you could do what you want and make your decisions, and then you also have a sexual preference for it. Is there any other reason why you still do it, but you still know that it's wrong? Um I guess it's just how I feel about it. Okay. Does would you say that your preference overpowers the feeling of it of it being wrong? Yes. Meaning that the pre the your your sexual desire mm -hmm. um of it 
over supersedes the fact that you know it's immoral? Yes. Okay, so that supersedes it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So, okay, got it, right? And audience, take notes of this as well. I'm actually learning as well as we're having this conversation because I don't have too many bisexual people up here. One, I do have some. We do be having some bisexual chicks. They say they bisexual. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's actually open to have the dialogue. Usually they be like, ah, nigga, I don't even care about none of that. They try to dis dismiss it, right? So here's a question for you, right? Since you do, since you said that you know it's immoral, you know it's wrong, but the uh, the sexual desires and that preference supersedes the immoral act. Now take that right, and remember when we was talking about shame, right? So shame is like let's put shame above here, mm -hmm. right? When you have shame, right, things and you like really feel shameful about it then it would start to supersede what's up here. Uh, it would start to, it, it will, uh, meaning that the feeling, since you know that it's an immoral act, the level would increase if you really felt more shame for it, right? Mm -hmm. So remember what we had to do about the body count for you to understand that. It is important. It is important. Mm -hmm. I had to make you understand. Right. Now, I'm going to try to make you understand. <laughs> I'm going to try to red pill you a little bit more. Okay. Chat, first time we're doing this. Let's see if it works. <laughs> All right? So here we go. And then we're going to end the podcast. <laughs> Let's see if it works. All right. So we spoke about uh, the uh, the body count. Mm -hmm. And we broke it down. And I broke it down in a multitude of different ways. And you've seen that it was like, oh, well, it does affect the woman. It does affect the woman when she had when she sleeps with a lot of men. Now I'm gonna try with the sexual deviance, right? Of the which is the per sexual perversion of women sleeping on with women or men sleeping with men. I think that men sleeping with men is much worse, but hey, <laughs> I think it's much of a moral. Uh, it could be actually as equal. Let's say that it is equal, but it is a difference. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. I'm going to try. So, uh, the reason why it's immoral, right? Because first you have something that's instantly immoral. Like if I uh, have a, you know, get out a gun and I off someone. Yeah, kill somebody. You know, that's murder. Yeah, I murder someone. Immediately it's, wrong. it's instantly. You feel the effects of it instantly, mm -hmm. right? So, the sexual deviance of male on, uh, male, on male or female on female, you don't feel the uh you don't see that you don't see the impact immediately no. you don't feel the impact immediately mm -hmm. so here's how it is right do you believe that everything now here's what i'm going to try to red pill you again <laughs> let's see if it works okay do you believe that so before you have a thought well before you make an action there's a thought right okay because th uh thoughts follow the action, right? right? Mm -hmm. Before you have a thought, you've been influenced to a degree, right? You've been influenced. Usually mm -hmm. where we have our body, we have our body, our biology. So we're influenced by our, our biology. Mm -hmm. Men have more testosterone. We want quantity. Women want have more estrogen. They want to feel the vibes. They want that chemistry, right? So we have our biological influence. And then we have the outside influences, meaning that societal influence, our family influence, and other influences like this, right? So, and those influence creates our thought, which then creates our action, right? So, since it is a fact, it's true, that no one is born homosexual or gay or LGBTQ or any of these things, because it's all based off of influence, what we've been influenced by, right? When we're influenced by our biology, but then we're influenced by outside sources, right? So since it's, it's safe to say that the more, uh, the more we see Disney showing the sexual perversion and people outdoors is doing sexual perversion, the more it lowers that, that, that immoral feeling of like it's wrong right you really don't feel that it's so wrong because you're, you've been influenced to see that it looks fine so it's like that 
it's nothing is instant. So you know it's wrong, but you can't really see that it's wrong because it's, it's like a norm. It's normalized. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? So since we know that things have to be influenced, we have to be influenced to a degree by our, our biology and then by outside source, outside forces for us to get our thoughts and then to get our actions. What if everyone adopted those influence? What if everyone was influenced, right, to have that thought and then the action of indulging in sexual perversion? If everyone did it, here's what here's here's the kicker. If everyone did it, the world would end in a hundred years because we wouldn't be able to procreate. Science would have to take over to, you know, have, it'd be like the, the, the matrix, basically. Robots or something would have to be taking eggs out of this person and doing things right. and creating human beings. It would really be like the matrix. So the facts is that, yeah, you don't see a uh, uh, an effect currently, but long-term over time, you see the effects and the effects would be the population would decrease and it will be the end of humanity if everyone is influenced to enact in this sexual perversion. Right. Right. Did I red pill you a little bit there? Did that increase the Im immoral? No, I mean, um, mm -hmm. I want to say yes and no. Yes, because I know what you mean. Like if, yeah. if women just started strictly liking women and men started strictly liking men, then it's like, okay, then how are we It'd supposed be the to end of the world? How are we going to exactly, procreate? Exactly. But I still feel like, that would never happen. Okay. Cool. So you feel like it would never happen. I don't believe it ever would. Yeah. I mean, well, I don't believe that it would ever happen either because if we just put the Bible into it, God destroyed it before when it was happening. And if it does seem like it's going to be happening a whole lot now, he most likely would do the same thing again. We'll put that in there. Did that help out a little bit? No. <laughs> No. I'm trying here, Chad. I'm trying to red pill her on this too. Trying to fully waken her up. I'm trying to be Neo for y'all, not Morpheus. I'm trying to be Neo. I am the one. Um, okay, I got one more. And then we're gonna move it right along. Let's see if this helps. So, all right, Dean. So the 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 whole the ending of the world didn't affect the it didn't increase the immoral no ness. Because it's not possible. Else. I don't see it as being, it's yeah, not possible. You, you can't see it as being possible. <clears throat> Let's see what else. What other angle could I hit this with? Uh, hmm, okay, I got it. Here's another angle, right? This is a much deeper angle, but I'll try it. Never tried it before. So, okay. So we know that influences predict thinking. Thinking predicts action, mm -hmm. right? We got that. Now... You know that if it happens like that to the whole world, population would end. So now let's just go with something that's more quick that we could see, right? So if the LGBTQ had their way, okay, no, I got to hit it this way. Do you think that uh, it feminizes society? LGBTQ, do you think it feminizes society? Yes or no? And by feminize, I mean... It doesn't have like a, a, a order to, to things, men leading, men protecting, men providing and doing these things. And, you know, women kind of get the benefits of what the protection of men. You mean, does it equalize every like men should be equal, just like women, basically? No, I mean, does it feminize? So so do you think that uh, the world is more feminine now? Because, yes. OK, cool. You do know that. Yes. And then do you think that that's a good thing or a bad thing? A good thing. Okay. What about for men? Do you think so? Because women want to be feminine, but do you think that? So you think that it's a good thing for men to be feminine? Yeah, I think it's okay. I think some men, even though they're straight, have a little feminine ism okay. in them. Got an angle, chat. I got an angle. Here we go. I'll try it out. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, so you think that men being feminine isn't a bad thing? No. Okay. Here it is. Men being feminine is a terrible thing. The reason why, say if I was a soy boy and all soft and all feminine and docile, I wouldn't be able to protect you. That means the firefighters wouldn't be busting through homes to, to protect them. That means that police wouldn't be, you know, protecting the, the community. That means that our soldiers that protect our borders and go out there and fight other countries to protect us, they wouldn't have that natural proclivity to be doing it. Because a masculine male is a natural proclivity to protect women. Make sense? Uh, I don't 
don't know. I feel like men can be feminine and masculine at the same time. It's that's an oxymoron. Would you date a? Would you take a guy seriously if he wore a dress on Saturdays and a dress in the hill on Saturdays? But you know, he was very masculine throughout the. I would not date a man who is bisexual. And ooh, ooh, stop it right there. Now, why wouldn't you date a man that's bisexual? It's not my preference. It's not your preference. No. But but peel back the layer to why it's not your preference. Is why it, it's not my preference? Yeah. Um, well, first I don't date men anymore. And second, um, I just I don't And ladies, I'm sorry, if y'all got anything to add on this, let me know. Y'all good, y'all rocking? I'm just listening. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Um It's just not what I go for. The same with um a woman who's bisexual. Okay, I'll help you peel back the layer. The reason why you don't like uh, a bisexual dude or a bisexual dude is because uh, he would be, uh, he's being dominated. Like, you know that he was dom he had to submit to another man and he was dominated by another man. So it would show a lack of provisioning from that man. It would show a lack of guidance or leadership from that man, would you say? No. That you would get from, I mean, you... If a man is submitting to another man, obviously he's less masculine than a ma than a than a masculine man than a man that's not doing than a straight man. Would you say? Because mm. there has to be a real reason to why you wouldn't date a guy that's bisexual. I mean, it's... But you're bisexual. It's just my... Honestly, it's just my preference. It's the same reason that I don't... I, I never wanted to speak to a man that has kids. Like, I just don't. Well, that's two totally different things. I okay, don't, I cool. choose not to. Let's just say it's just your preference then. So the angle I'm trying to hit it here is pretty much I'm saying is uh, if the world was all, you know... Pride, 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 pride this. You get what I'm saying? How would we even be able to protect our borders to stop people from going in? So you think that somebody who is a man who is sassy feminine, boy. a sassy can't Nasty. can't can't protect? He Does doesn't it wouldn't want to? What do you okay, let's do the probabilities now. Let's not look in possibilities. Because anything is possible. Okay. I do know we got a lot of uh, the prison system is filled with them. They got a lot of big old strong dudes and they're taking fruity, taking day fruity. Right. You get what I'm saying? So we, we know that there's exceptions to the rule, right? Okay. You get that. But I'm talking about in general, right? And the probability, the probability is extremely higher for a guy that's feminine and docile to not have the natural proclivity to protect his community and the country. That's what I'm saying. Do you agree with that or no? Okay, if you don't agree with that, it's going to be a longer conversation. <laughs> We're going to have to get in some else. Chat, I, just, I, just, I tried to red pillar on that, but it's a lot of things I'm going to have to teach her to red pillar on a whole lot of other stuff. But we going to get there. I'm not giving up. Um, yeah, just cool. men can still protect a woman even though they're feminine. Like, the same way that... One, though. You yeah, you maybe wouldn't, feminine, thing, like, you wouldn't even date one. Or, like, feminine, like... Physically. Get their nails done. That's I'm okay with yeah, that. I feel like that's yeah, feminine. Like, boys. I'm okay with that a guy gets their nails done or gets his eyebrows done or, you know... I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about... Emotionally anyways, feminine? Hey, chat, it's a whole lot of things that I'm going to have to work this angle. This is why you, you're seeing it in 4K right now on how I'm literally trying to influence her into the holy way. <laughs> and I'm going to work on it. Nah, I'm going to have I'm her good. back. I'm, I'm going to have like her. this side. Oh, I'm not saying that you don't like it. We know that you like it because it's your preference. And, it, and it's not that it's okay, but that's it's cool for you to have your preferences. But um, I'm going to try again next time, chat. But let's end the convo here. And let's do last thoughts on the podcast. And also, if y'all happen to have any other questions, I could ask these questions. But let's start with Trish. Do you have any questions? If not, then last thoughts on the podcast. I had a lot of fun. You did? Yeah, it was great. Okay. Cool, cool. Nice. Uh, would you come back? Yeah. I'll, yeah. Okay. Word. I'll have you back.